Hello and welcome to the day we have all been waiting for all summer. We're finally live for the 2023 Vegan Duds World Championship. My name is American Carl and I'm joined in the studio by our aerial expert, Jonathan Fay. This year, we're going back to the roots, back to where it all started, Fognobada, here in Oslo, Norway. Jonathan, are you excited for today? I couldn't be more excited. I feel like what has happened this past year in Duds uh, around the world has just raised the level of what, what is possible in this sport. And uh, I'm really excited to see what the athletes are going to throw down today. We have an incredible audience out here that made it out despite the rain, despite the Norwegian weather. And what you're seeing on your screen now is the National Armed Forces Band for Norway. They're going to give us an intro to kick things off. I'm sitting at the edge of my seat, and here's our aerial shot of the pool. There you see to your right-hand side where the armed forces are standing at the 7 meter and the 10 meter prepared to jump themselves. This is going to be quite an intro. We kicked off in style with the Norwegian Armed Forces Band. And now for our ceremonial duds. Salute midair, right back to his Armed Forces Band. That is one way to kick off our championship this year. We've got a full crowd. Everybody's excited to be here. And look who is up now. Ken Storness. You may or may not have seen him on Instagram, retweeted by uh, no other than Elon Musk. This guy is a high-flying Viking with style. <laughs> oh, that was so good. <laughs> With the pyro, the flames, the, the axe. axe in hand. <laughs> the axe in hand. He's excited. I know uh, Ken's going to be judging today, and uh, I was talking to him a little bit about that. He's super stoked. I think everybody here is uh, equally as excited to see what's happening. And here come our athletes right now, representing the flags, representing the countries. We've got athletes coming from all around the world. You see the flags here, Norway, the US, Sweden, even the Texas flag, Spain. <laughs> you gotta love the nationality and the representation, but also it shows how far this sport has come over the last two years. I mean, we've been calling it a world championship for a long time now, but you know, it was a world championship because we had Norway and Finland involved. Now it is really starting to take off and there is, there are athletes from 
literally across the world that are competing here in Oslo today. It, it's it's hard to imagine. Yeah, it's it's crazy to see just the spread that has happened from Norway in the past few years. Every year, it's just gotten bigger and bigger. Uh, I know in the United States right now, uh, it is almost weird if you don't know how to duds. If you're a cliff jumper and you don't duds, it's it's kind of odd. You're uh, it, it's just sweeping the nation. I feel like you go to a public pool now and you see people dancing, you see people trying tricks that you might see here in the World Championships. And uh, the excitement's there, the, the stoke is there. These, it's just, it's a crowd-pleasing sport and everybody loves to just see cool poses in the air, see the artistry, see just the style involved and um, I know that's I know that's what I like about the sports. And right there, this shot of the two uh, the two young guns in the tournament. I think it's just a great. Um, that's one of the coolest things I think about Dutch right now is that the fact that there are so many young kids who are looking at these athletes, looking up to these athletes, and thinking, you know, this is something that I can do. And you know, Dutch Academy, we teach. There's there's a big safety por portion here, and there's a there's a teaching portion that happens with these young guns. But they are, you know, it's 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 so cool to see that the younger generation is. This is really starting to take off with them. If you look around, you know, the line, the long line that was that we were waiting um, for people waiting to get in. Half of them were, you know, young kids who are here to see their, like right here, perfect yeah, example. Perfect. And it, it, it's, it's really, really cool to see that the future of Dutch is in really good hands. Yeah, it's it's just such an accessible sport. You know, you you can be any age, go to a dock, go to a pool. It can only be maybe one meter, but you can still do a Dutch from it. Uh, the entry level, there's there's really no entry requirement. Uh, we have an interview coming up, and uh, yeah. you're going to hear from Osbjerg. Let's uh, let's let's listen in. All right, guys, I'm here with Ospiak today. She's known as the Queen of Dots. Uh, two years in a row, you've been world champion. How do you feel about this year? Uh, I'm excited. Pressure a lot, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so every year uh, so far, there's been more and more women uh, joining for the Dotsing. How do you feel about that? I think that's so much fun. I'm working all year, and especially in the summer, to recruit more girls and trying to help them raise a level, making myself more competition. So I think it's so cool. Good. I'm glad that you're willing to have more competition. What advice do you have for girls that are watching currently that maybe want to join the Dotsing World Championship next year? Well, first of all, you have to try. Uh, <laughs> you gotta try to make it and just start low, get comfortable, and then you can push it up with the heights, maybe try some tricks. Just remember to have fun on the way. And do you have uh, an, an opinion on who's your biggest competition this year? What did you say? Uh, your biggest competitors for this year? Uh, the, uh, the, who's your, uh, who are you most worried about losing oh, to? Oh, my biggest competition? Um, I think that depends if it's classic or freestyle. Mm -hmm. But I think the, some of the foreigners this year is going to put up a good fight. So Sydney Kowalski, specifically from the USA, is definitely one of the ones to be worried about, I heard. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I am. Yeah. But I think it's so cool that it came all the way over here to compete. Oh yeah, it'll be such a great time. I hope that you do great today. I'm so excited to see you. Um, your classic dots is always the best to watch. I'm so excited to see the queen of dotsing. Thank you. Best of luck to you today. Um, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, do you uh, have a favorite uh, jump that you like to do, a favorite twist, or...? I would say I love the 720 because I feel you can do it from any height and you can put so much style into it, you can really put your touch onto it. Awesome. So, yeah, probably my favorite trick. <laughs> Sounds good, Ashok. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to see you up there.
I have Kim and Toro with me today. So Kim, I'm going to start with you. 2019, last time you were here, you won the World Championship. How do you feel about it today? Don't really feel much about 2019. It's 2023 now. Obviously going to try and do the same, but got really tough competition next to me and behind me. Yeah. So both of you last year were in the semifinals. Um, so I know, Tore, you uh, did a quad and didn't quite land it last year. Are you going to go for a crazy trick again or something safe this year? Uh, I don't even know. Like. I think I'm just going to try some new shits yeah. <laughs> on the top of the tower, so I don't know what, to, what I'm going to do yet. See what the vibes of everyone else is and then go from there? Yeah. yeah awesome. And Kim, do you have anything specific that you're uh, going to do today? Do you know? Yeah, but I kind of want to keep it a secret. Oh, yes, of course. So, yeah, no yeah. one can know that. <laughs> so what are you most nervous about today? For some reason, I'm not that nervous. I'm just here for. I'm just here for having fun. So, yeah. Just ascend it with all of all of the boys and see everyone do the craziest tricks. Yeah, that's the fun part. Awesome! Thank you guys so much. I'll see you up there. Now I'm here with Ryan Bean and Johnny Nyberg, the two USA Dodgers besides Reagan Popoff today. How are we feeling, guys? Feeling all right, ready to get in this water and do some tricks. We got some uh, beautiful Norwegian weather. I'm super excited to jump. Uh, it's going to be a great day. The light rain is awesome today. Nothing better than a little light rain to start it off. <laughs> what are we most nervous about? Honestly, just making sure I don't mess up my trick the first round like last year. But uh, yeah, I think I got it dialed this year. Biggest thing is making it past the first round today. Yeah, I mean, we're in Norway. This is the, the home of where it all started. So we're with the best of the best. I'm just, I'm nervous overall, but we've trained for this moment and uh, I'm excited to represent. It's gonna be a good time. Yeah, it's a big day today. Being at the original spot where everything started, I'm sure you guys are very excited about that. Yeah. This is, this is the uh, historic spot. I, uh, I got into death diving because of this spot. So it's an honor to be here. I'm feeling great. <laughs> feeling good. I love it. Thank you guys so much. I can't wait to see you up there. Let's go. Thank you. All right, Sikfa and Hamon, how do we feel? Are you guys ready to win this competition against everyone that is twice your age? Yeah, I'm ready. A bit uh, cold, but it's going to be fun. I'm feeling good today, so yeah, I'm looking forward to jump. I just want you guys to know, every other person you are competing against is terrified to lose against you. You guys are insane. I saw you jump yesterday, and you guys were crazy. Um, are you... Um, planning on th uh, dodging a specific way, or do you are you going to jump and just find out from there? Uh, Herman can start. Huh? Are you going to do a specific trick yet? Do you know? Or yeah, I have uh, some tricks planned. Yeah. Yeah. Something you've done before or never done? Uh, oh yeah, I've done uh, all the tricks before. So you're comfortable? Yeah, I'm comfortable. Yeah, I'm comfortable too. I have done the tricks I want to do today, so I'm pretty ready. That's awesome. I'm so excited to see you both finally in person jumping. This is my first time here and seeing you guys send it. I'm super, super excited to see where you guys place today. Thank you guys so much.
All right. It is so much, always so much fun to hear from our athletes, and um, it is great to kind of get first, first-hand experience right, right as they're about to, uh, right as they're about to jump. You could see the nerves inside of them. Uh, others were confident. Walk me through, like, as as a. That's actually a great time to to give a little bit of context about yourself, Jonathan, and tell us why you're the expert, and then kind of give me an idea of what's going on in their heads right now in, in, in these athletes. Yeah, so uh, I've done a lot of uh, freestyle cliff diving in the past, uh, a lot of base jumping. Um, I feel like in any type of uh, extreme sport or uh, say stressful situation, um, you do have nerves, you do have uh, self-doubt per se, and uh, things running through your mind uh, that are discouraging and some very encouraging. But I think once it comes time to like, it's your turn to jump, you're just about to start running off the platform, everything just vanishes, all the worries, all of the doubts. You're just in the moment running and like, you know, really trying to uh, perform what is in your head to perform, what you're trying to throw down. And uh, I know the anticipation, it's, it's a lot of like anxiousness because all these guys have so much experience jumping, so much experience doing flips and aerials uh, that <coughs> You, you almost get to a point where you, you want to throw. You want to go as quickly as possible because it's so fun, it's so invigorating. And uh, I think that's that's kind of what's going through a lot of our athletes' heads now. They they just want to probably get to the point. Yeah. Like, let's go, let's go, let's throw down. This like, is it's time. This is the hardest part of the competition almost, the build up, the anticipation. Yeah, the, yeah no, that's, that's, that's a great point. Yeah, waiting. And, and you yourself. So tell me a little about you and why, you know, you're our expert. I'm going to toss you all the questions that everybody else has. <laughs> I'm far from the expert myself. I'm a huge fan of the sport. Yeah. I am the last person to throw myself off of 10 meters. Tell us a little bit why we call them athletes with for a reason, because this is really difficult. It's challenging. These guys practice all the time. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what goes into being a dead sir. Yeah, so I think what what goes into being a dead sir, uh, I feel like a lot of these uh, these people have backgrounds in some type of aerial sport, whether it's gymnastics, whether it's freestyle skiing, uh, trampoline acrobatics, uh, parkour. Uh, it all kind of uh, creates this basis to um, to just work work out how duds in the airtime feels and uh, learning your body, learning how to control it mid flip uh, while you're floating through the air. Um, I think that is uh, having that background is so important and it's really helpful whenever you're trying to learn new tricks, you understand the progression, you understand where you're at in the air. Um, I think that is uh, more or less how it goes. Um, here we're getting here we're getting the uh, a first hand look at our test jumpers. So these guys are kind of test out the tower, make sure things are ready to go. We've got Theodore Blixflatten, who's 11 years old, and Morten Flanteng, who is uh, is a little bit older. They didn't give us a specific name, maybe uh, intentionally, but you he know. is a little bit older. Uh, Martin is uh, one of the original Dudzers. He's an OG in the sport. Uh, he was doing this in Frogner Badet, I think when he was in his, you know, te late teens, maybe early 20s. Oh, here we go. Oh, that was awesome. So textbook, double front flip straight to Duds. Uh, if you watch, he did a little bit of an opening after the first front flip. Adds the style, adds the air awareness. It's really cool. Is he gonna jump with a backpack yeah, on? He might be. That Here would be cool. That would be very cool. He is. He is jumping with a backpack on. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Getting ready for the smack. <laughs> we heard that smack from heard it. all the way back here in our commentator box. Man, he has been doing this for so long. Uh, definitely used to the impact. Uh, collects the hat after the, afterwards. I think he, I, did he try to turn his hat midair? He may have tried to turn his hat midair. I, I, I was. I, I'm not entirely sure that the camera. That would have been, uh, that would have been an interesting twist. Um, <laughs> let's, been, there, yeah. there he is, smiling, everybody's good. Getting out of the He's pool, stoked. safe, sound, most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <We're flat> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he used to jump like that, you know, right, right as he's leaving the pool. That uh, is amazing. <laughs>
I feel like that's the essence of the roots of this sport. Just, you know, uh, guys who want to throw themselves off of 30 feet. For our international, or I guess our American, only our American listeners, 10 meters, 33 feet, right? Yep. Yes, 33, 33 feet. And then yep. everybody else who, you know, uses the metric system, we're at 10 meters here today. Um, and these guys, they jump, you know, different heights all year round. And we've had, you know, throughout the year, so this is kind of the culminating event today. Yeah. And we've had a year-long or a summer-long um, tour, a world tour. There's been nine events for the Dutch World Tour so far. And each one of these athletes has qualified th to this event through a different, whether it's, you know, winning a tournament, winning a golden ticket. There's a few ways to qualify, but all of them have qualified in their unique way. And we have athletes from Norway, Spain, France, Finland, and Sweden. 24 on the male side and seven female athletes. Yep, uh, so to qualify for the event, uh, there's a few different avenues like Carl was saying. Uh, you can either win a competition, uh, get the golden ticket. Uh, you can compete in, throughout the world tour, you can compete at all the different stops and slowly increase your ranking points based upon that. Uh, there's, a, there's an overall ranking for all of, the, all of the stops. Or you can get a wild card, so that's uh, people that, maybe haven't been able to make it to all of the stops, but uh, Duds Federation feels that those people are more than worthy of competing in the world championships, and they feel like they would uh, raise the competition level. Uh, so I know there's a there's a few athletes that have gotten that. Uh, Reagan Popoff is one of those. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard. There's only two events uh, in the US at the moment on the world tour. So it's hard for Americans to come over to Europe and try to like, you know, navigate through Scandinavia and uh, and compete in all the different stops. So it's nice that uh, they have that access to a wild card because I know there are quite a few Americans that are very talented in the Duds world at the moment. Yeah, that's one of the coolest things to see. I mean, at being an American, half American, half Norwegian myself, I am like passionate about this sports growth in the U.S. and it's really, really cool to see. I mean, having you sitting next to me is also just amazing. We've got two American commentators, one with who obviously does, is, does a lot more tricks than me, but just to see the growth and see see that we've got you know American athletes that are so excited about coming all the way to Oslo, Norway, battling the elements to be here, and it's just a testament to, to how much it's grown and it's, it's yeah. it hasn't even started. Like you mentioned, we had two two events in the U.S. this year, one in Tennessee, one in Utah, yep. and. Um, that was kind of, we're just dipping our toe in the water of what those what the potential is over there and this again you can I would love to hear you speak a little bit about the growth of it over the last couple of years yeah sure what you think um, what you think next year will look like oh man I I think this year in Duds I I feel like the height of what is just like humanly possible to Duds um, was raised was almost like doubled I feel like uh, now we're seeing freestyle duds which is uh, doing some sort of like spin or flip off of 30 meters which is like roughly a hundred feet it's crazy uh, and seeing that happen and seeing it become almost a norm and then now like 20 meters what used to be so ridiculous if you did a freestyle duds from there maybe four years ago or if you even dudsed it in general it was it was like wow you were at like the top of the game and now you see a video every every two days of somebody dudsing 20 meters 20 plus meters and the level in general has just been raised as far as height and what's humanly possible to withstand. Once you dial in your technique, once you figure out exactly how you need to punch the water, um, it really is possible to duds from extremely high heights. Heights where like people would jump with a parachute. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Uh, uh, I, I, I have such a respect for these guys for doing it because I, I mean, I, if I walk yeah. up to that 10 meter, I mean, you too, you do, I mean, you, you base jump, you, you know, if I even yeah. walk up to that 10 meter, I'm, my legs are shaking. I'm like, all right, get me out of here. You guys are nuts. Yeah. It is a, it's, it's a dangerous sport. And, you know, a big part of that is, is safety. You have yeah. to do this safely because, you know, like you said, you're dancing from 20, like a hundred feet. Yeah. If you mess <laughs> that up or you do the wrong thing in the air, you're, you're, you're going to get injured. And. So I think what, it's really, really important to, to emphasize to everybody listening that this is a sport for everybody and that it, you can absolutely work your way into it and you know it's, it's accessible, yeah. like you said, but at the same time, it's something that needs to be taken very seriously. Yeah. You're jumping from really high heights. I think uh, the, the biggest thing is like these guys are professional athletes. Like, they're very talented. Uh, you know, they have a lot of uh, 
just inherent ability along with practice and dedication. So uh, all of that combined leads to like the ability to withstand an impact or uh, you know really really perform at the top of the game. But like like Carl's saying, it is it is dangerous, you know, uh, especially especially once you start to get to those higher heights, you know, once you're jumping above 20 meters, I mean, the water hurts if you land wrong. It does not feel good, <laughs> and so uh, even at 10 meters, if you don't if you screw up, like you still get your bell rung, your your head can still hurt, like you can still knock the wind out of yourself, you can crack a rib, you know, it's it's. It's very impressive to play this game of chicken with the water and see how late you can close, see how big your splash can be, how early can you rise up out of the water. Um, so it is. Yeah, you are highlighting. I mean, and, and that's what is so cool about today because today we are, everything Jonathan just talked about, it's difficult, it's extreme, it takes a lot of practice. And what we're going to get to witness today is 24 of the best male athletes and seven of the best female athletes doing exactly that across the world. And they've all come here today to Oslo and we have a competition set up, which at the end, we'll have a champion. And that's how we crown our 2023 uh, Vegan Deaths World Championship. So let's talk a little bit about the format today. Yeah. Um, which I would love to hear you uh, walk us through because the first round we've got different types of deads, we've got different styles. Um, yeah, I think it's important that uh, we understand what's what these guys are doing. Absolutely. Um, so we have a slight change up from last year. We're gonna have two freestyle jumps in the beginning. Uh, so we have two uh, two jumps from each of the 24 athletes, the male athletes, and then uh, we have one jump from the females, which are seven athletes. And uh, the beginning, the first round is freestyle. So tell me yeah. a little bit about freestyle versus yeah. classic. Yeah, so uh, freestyle is, I think what you might be able to imagine it is. Uh, so you're doing flips, spins, uh, you're trying to showcase your style and ability while also uh, being original in the air and like throwing something that is uh, eye-catching to the judges. Um, there are perks to doing uh, maybe something a little bit more technical, but I think the roots of duds is based in style uh, and technique and just looking so smooth in the air. Like, you you want it to look effortless. I think when you make it look effortless, that's, that's by far the best thing you can do. So we have freestyle to start. And then uh, as we move on from freestyle, uh, 16 athletes are going to get eliminated and we'll be down to eight athletes. We're gonna have a little battle head to head and whoever wins that is going to advance into the semifinals and that will be a freestyle. And from there, uh, we're gonna have uh, the bronze battle, and then we're gonna have the gold and silver battle. And I think that will be really cool showmanship. You'll have both people up on top uh, thrown down. All right, that is, we're gonna keep you updated throughout the tournament on all the, all, on all the, the uh, you know, logistics and different styles, and Jonathan's our expert on that. Here we're getting our first look at the athletes. So this is our start list, this is the order they're gonna jump in uh, in this first round and we're going to talk you through each one of them and the, like Jonathan said the first one freestyle so we're gonna have 24 athletes jumping in a freestyle um, manner and each one of them has their own flair this is this is this is where we start to get excited this is where we start to have a little fun because we know all these guys personally and uh, you know each one of them brings something completely different to the uh, the, the sport of deads and our first athlete, Comey. Yeah. Tell, tell, us little, tell, tell us a little about Comey. Oh, yeah. So I guess Comey's starting, starting us off, which is rad. Uh, Comey has the world record for the highest duds and freestyle duds. He did it both at the same time, which was super rad. 34.25 meters, which is that's just, not. just huge. Uh, that's like, yeah, just, it's insane. It's insane to see that and uh, just, I mean, he makes 20 meters look like it's five meters. It's uh, really impressive and super stoked to see what he decides to throw down today. Very creative, very unique style. So there he is. The man himself. Fast glasses on, the French baguette, <laughs> ready to throw down. <laughs> Hyping up the crowd, getting every pumped. That's what it's all about. 
in this competition format, you have to have style. You have to be able to separate yourself from the other athletes. And, you know, a big part of that is getting the crowd involved, getting people hyped. It's a crowd-pleasing sport, you know? It's, uh, there's a lot of showmanship in it. And I think if you understand that, uh, you kind of, uh, you understand that, so. Look at these glasses. He's ready to go. <laughs> Is he going to jump in those? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Right before he jumps, uh, what are the judges looking for? Oh, yeah, Let's yeah. Let's go! Uh, judges are looking for style, steez, uh in the air. They're looking for technique. Uh, do you look good? Do you look poised in the air? Uh, they want power. And they want style. On entry. <laughs> So you guys saw how he uh, poked at the judges. He looked at them. He basically did a brawny to Dutz. Um, check this out. He looks. Yep. <laughs> so Landed a little head heavy. So uh, the technique on entry is you almost want to be hands and feet at the same time. Your arms want to be fully extended. Your legs want to be fully extended. Uh, his legs are a little bit tucked, which makes for a pretty big splash, which is uh, added points. However, uh, yes, entry is really important, so the judges are looking for very dialed, very proper kind of triangle-esque entry. Um, and that might be why the scores are a little bit lower. That, that's probably why, because, uh, you know, it, it was a little under-rotated is what happened. Uh, he landed a little very head-heavy. Here comes Pacom. And our we got Pacom and Pacom. Our Pacom. scores are going from one to ten, just so everybody knows. Yeah. He brought a water gun. <laughs> 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 that trick is called a lupa. Uh, so he uh, he just jumped off, shot the water gun at the judges. The whole idea of a lupa is to run out. Expose your back to the water as long as you can, and then rotate over into duds. Um, and that looked pretty well executed. He got to his he got to his hands and feet. Nice belly belly flop position, and then closes right at the end. Good splash. It seems like everybody loved it, and that's important. All right, 6.63. Right on, Paco. Right on, brother. <laughs> And now one of the uh, one of the superstars from Norway, Truls Top. He is a uh, he is a back-to-back -back world champion. He won in 2016 and 2017. He is here to throw down. He's one of the style gods in the sport. Personally, love jumping with this guy. Always brings the vibe. Always brings high energy. Let's see what he's got. Oh, <laughs> oh bro, that was so sick. What? Right on, man. So that was a, he did like a 720, but after the first 360, he kicks oh my God. like a martial artist. And then he just, he lays it out and like shows so much control. I mean, that's really what you want to see. Like, look at that layout right there and then closes. He was slightly feet heavy. I don't know if the judges are going to deduct for that or not, but I mean, man, the airtime, that all looks so nice. So nice. Very unique, very creative style. I, I got to say, that was sick. That was sick. Everybody stoked. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, they like that. They definitely they like that. 7.73. Seems like Trolls is in the lead right now. He's going to take our number one spot, but next up... Oscar P. Rød from Norway. This is definitely an up and coming Norwegian talent. Let's see what he's got. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> All right, so there's a few different ways you can land, and he just landed at no hands. Uh, so he basically goes in on his head. He does a front full front half to duds and doesn't block with his hands at all, uh, I guess. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Man. You, you, are, you are made a really great point there because there's 
three different ways to land in a dose. There are three different ways to land. Oh yeah, he did actually get his hands down. Um, sorry about that. But yeah, there's three different ways to land. Uh, you have shrimp, which is your knuckles and feet. Then you have uh, crusher, which is your forearms and feet. And then you have no hander, which is head and feet. So you don't even block with your hands, you just land straight on your head. It's definitely a crowd pleaser. I know the judges like it. It hurts a little bit more, but man, it, it looks so much better. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. It's for the daredevils. Yeah. All right, we got Reagan Pop off here. Uh, I love his last name because he really does pop off. Showcases a lot of power. Oh, goodness. Gainer full down to duds. I've seen him try that one before, and it looks like he put it down so well. He's smiling. He's stoked. Awesome. Look at that. Oh. So he does gainer. He does a full. Dang, he put that down. Nice, very good. How, how hard is it to yes. contort your body in the air? That was okay. really good. Uh, man, it is difficult. Like, you need a lot of power, you need a lot of torque. I mean, if you look at him, he's kind of built to flip. And uh, it's, it's kind of difficult. It's kind of difficult to contort your body that fast and do uh, kind of the variation of what he just did, because it's three separate tricks almost in one. Um, so he does gainer, he does a 360, and then he does another gainer to duds. And he put that down right to his feet, right to his hands. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, met it. Occasionally that can happen. Your fist can hit you in the forehead, can hit you in the eye. Uh, I've seen that happen. It's happened to me personally. You know, it's just part of the sport. But, uh, yeah, let's see what the judges think of that. I'm curious. Yeah, that was, uh... I see it, but a little bit of blood never hurt nobody. Yeah, a little bit of red in your eyes, but that doesn't keep you from being absolutely insane. The Norwegians are in some trouble this year, it looks like, huh? What? Hey, that's, what? What? that's what Dodd's all about, a little bit of carnage, you know? Yeah. Go, go hard or go home, am I right? Oh, yep, yep, let's go! Your name is Papa for a reason. All right, something to watch here. Uh, he is going to come up while the splash is still coming down. Oh, they didn't. And that can contribute to a higher score. That, that can contribute to a higher score. Oh, man. Reagan Popoff takes the lead with that one. Um, Sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Our next up, Martin Augustig from Sweden. Got the second place in the Dutch World Tour in Sweden not that long ago. Yeah. He's made it here to Oslo to show us what he's got. Oh! <laughs> that was so creative. I love that. He jumped way early there. He jumped off the railing. Yeah. He, he ran and like planted on the railing with his left foot and then did a double backflip out of it. Look at this. Have you ever seen Look that? Do that? No, I've never seen that. Oh my God. And he landed it. That was so sick. I love seeing the creativity that some of these guys are capable of. It's just so fun to watch. I, I, re I thoroughly enjoy all of this. And that's oftentimes what pushes people to the next level because, you know, you need to show judges sometimes something that's never been done before. Yeah. You need to be pushing that limit. You need, especially here at the World Championship, this is the best athletes across the world. Yeah. You need to be pushing that limit as much as you can. Yeah. All right. That, Seven and a half. That definitely was reflected in our score. <laughs> yep. He takes he takes third right now. Uh, man. Yeah. It's just like you said. It's it's uh it's hard to stand out against the crowd against the you know a level of competition like this and to showcase something so unique is uh, really special and the judges definitely reward that. Our seventh judge, R2 from Finland. R2. All right. Cool, so that was a double front half to Duds. So R2 did a front flip to a front half. Uh, it looked good, but I believe he over-rotated just a little bit. He landed on his feet a little heavy, so uh, I'm curious what the judges will do with that. Um, 
But I mean, the airtime looks so good. Like he didn't flail, he didn't move. He was just in the flip, doing the tack perfectly. Um, wow. All right. That, that is right on. Ending. That's such a hard trick to like put down perfectly because you have so much momentum going into it. Uh, Our judges scores. Let's see what the judges think. All right. 6.5. 6 Right on, right on. Puts him in sixth out of our seven dancers so far. <laughs> Just to remind everybody, we are going to get two freestyle jumps from each of these guys, So, yeah. and it's going to be their best score of the two. Yep. If they don't get the score they want in the first one, then they have a chance again on their second. All right, Arna is up. Arna is, yeah, there we go. This is, is uh, a legend in the sport. Yeah, he's an OG. He's He's been doing this for a long time. He has, uh, He's notorious for his late closes. He makes a big splash and he comes up early. And I, I feel like he is a uh, he is definitely a crowd pleaser. He likes to call out the judges. He likes to call out the crowd. Um, look at him. He's smiling. He's just taking all. Trolls knows that he knows. Uh, all right, let's see what he's got. He's, he's got a lot of power too. Uh, he really emphasizes distance when he's jumping. Oh, <laughs> dang, that was cool. He like, uh, he did a 180 before he left the platform. Into three and a half spins, I think? I want to watch the recap of that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sick. Starts spinning before he leaves, takes another yeah. step and close. Yeah, so he, he starts just a little early, goes off of his right foot. That's super creative. I like that. I like that. I've never seen that. I, I think that's something that's really cool. Uh, amongst the majority of the Dudzers so far, they've been doing things that uh, I don't I don't think I've ever seen before. You know, very creative. And I I love that the World Championships is bringing that out in the athletes. Our judges scores are rolling in. 7.4 okay. puts them in okay. fourth. Okay. Fourth out of eight so far. Yeah, and I completely agree with you. So far, this has been, it's been different, it's been unique, mm -hmm. and I think, I think the athletes understand. <laughs> <laughs> as you say that. <laughs> as, as the words are coming out of my mouth, they yeah. understand that they have to be different. They have to kind of <laughs> separate themselves from the crowd. I think he's separating himself. That is for sure. Let me win. Again. This is Jean, Jean Combe Com Bertrand. Yeah. <laughs> he just started dancing this year. Yeah, he just started dancing. He looked very controlled in the air. That was really, that was really cool. Uh, it almost looked like a classic, but right at the last second, he added a rotation to it. So he, he kind of like tweaks to the, to his left. Yep, and then goes back on center. Tries to get to Duds, so he landed a little head heavy. Um, and the leg slapped, which makes a big splash, which the crowd likes. However, the judges really want to see dialed hands and feet entry. So hands and feet entry might be, is that the first thing the judges are looking for? Uh, I think, I think there's a few things that the judges are looking for, uh, style in the air, uh, and entry execution is, I think are the top two. Um, as well as power, uh, the judges want to see you boost. They want to see you run as fast as you can off the platform, get air time. Uh, they want to see you as a projectile. They don't want to see you just falling. They want to see you just launching like you're going out of a catapult or something. So, so this is our athlete, Kapo Kosinen from Finland. He, uh, he, took, he took home first place at Des World Tour Helsinki this year, and this guy is a maniac. Oh my. Triple side to duds. So he did three flips there uh, over his side. So if you uh, get a recap, um, you'll see how he kind of just one, two, and then on the third one, he opens up, which is really important. Opens up, spots the water, and then bam. Perfect entry. That was really good. That's a technical trick. It's really hard to slow yourself down in order to land perfectly like that, but he did a really good job. That seems, um, that, that definitely was a clean landing. 
Yep. And 6.6. .6. All right. Right on. Seventh place. I know some of the judges are looking for a little bit more uh, float in the air and a little bit more creativity. They don't want to necessarily just see gymnastics tricks or something like that. They want to see unique, creative things. They want to see float. They want to see like style and control in the air. The time? Can yeah, I so go? This is a crowd favorite. Absolutely. This is our boy John Nyberg. Yeah. Straight out of Texas, <laughs> U.S. <laughs> national champion in Utah. So stoked. <laughs> right on, Johnny. <laughs> so I believe they call that a shrimp roll. He does a shrimp roll, and then he goes to no-hander. The no-hander entry is just so proper. This is one of his like coin tricks. I've seen him do this quite a bit, and he always just puts it down. It's so nice. The thing I love about John is that he, it's so obvious that he loves dancing. He loves the sport. He loves like, he loves the community aspect of it. He's the first guy to walk over to the fans, dab yeah. everybody up. He is, he is a oh, great right. ambassador. And he's a great dancer. He's an absolutely amazing dancer. Uh, Coming in at second place. Right uh, now. I think it's it's so important to have just like this very impactful energy when you're about to duds and Johnny embodies that, no doubt. Now we've got Elias Sridhar from Norway. Ooh. All right. So that was a front half to backflip to duds. Uh, some people call it a Sukahara. Spotting the water there, spotting the water there. Goes to close. I'd say that was a pretty well executed duds. Does he make it Kinda, all the way around? His his hands hit a little earlier than his feet did, but sometimes sometimes that adds a little bit of style because it makes a big splash. And and we like big splashes here. This is a splash diving sport. So let's see how the judges score reflect. It's rank all right. seventh. Alright. Rank seventh. We have Ryan Bean. Um, he is one of the most creative, talented flippers I think I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I'm always curious to see what he's going to throw down. <laughs> All right. If you watch, he did a 360, but he added his own flavor to it. He, he, hits, he hits a kick to the left. And then points and straight into duds. Look at the power and the energy in that. He is, f <laughs> he is flying. It's pretty difficult to do three separate things in a 360 and still land properly. And uh, I'm pretty stoked on that. I, I hope the judges are too. He did land a little feet heavy, uh, so we'll see. But the airtime looked really nice. Okay. Okay, yeah, I think the I think the landing is kind of reflected in the score, but other than that, I mean, definitely had it. All right, up next we got Robin. This is his home spot. He has been coming here since he was a little kid to jump in Frogner Uh This guy is maniac. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> man, man, he's like a very talented diver. Extremely, uh, extremely. And He's just been able to like put all of this into duds. It's so sick. He does front flip, he does a 360, he does a front half, and then he goes straight into duds. And big splash. Man. Doing it in the jorts. Dude. Man, yeah. He has the he has the classic style. The classic steez with it with the jorts. I love it. Bring it back to the roots. Yeah. Man, that is just a lot to be doing from 10 meters, you know? It's just it's like one trick, next trick, next trick, entry. You know, it's a, it's all encompassing for the airtime, and it's really cool. I think he's stoked on that. All right, rank seven. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of scores average about like around seven. Yeah. And I think that's that's just how that's that's just how it's going to be. The judges aren't going to necessarily be awarding crazy points uh, unless they see something that absolutely blows their mind. It is the bar is high, and we're at the world championship. This is you know this is. These, this is the cream of the crop for Dutzers, and if yeah. you, if you want to win this, you have to, you know, you have to 
do better than every not only do better than everyone else, but impress the judges and show people something that they've never seen before. Yeah. You have to go above and beyond to win this tournament. And every year we have someone that does it. We have someone that just pushes that limit and really, really kind of gets you jumping out of your seat. Yeah. Yes, we do. And you, you talked about it briefly there. That, so when we're, we're jumping right now, we're jumping at 10 meters. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the competition heights throughout the year are maybe anywhere from 11, 12, 12 and a half. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what makes it, it, it feels like it's got to be harder to jump from 10 than 12 if you're trying to do these tricks. Yeah, so I know some of the athletes think that uh, the height should be raised, actually, because there's just not quite enough time to show their show their own flair, show their creativity off of 10, you know, adding an extra meter and a half, maybe three meters, uh, really does help. Granted, it it's more impactful, you know, the entry hurts maybe a little more, uh, but... Oh! oh. Christian Andenes. Almost caught it. Almost caught that. Almost caught it. But I think that's a perfect example of what we were just talking about. If the, like, I totally yeah. understand the idea. <laughs> He's coming his hair. <laughs> but it forces you to be more creative, too. Oh, that was a yo-yo. Oh, that was a yo-yo. That's so Tossing cool. Tossing that yo-yo out. Yeah. Back like, that's that. Jumping from 10 meters pushes the creativity level. Mm -hmm. You have to yeah. come up with something else. You have to be, you know, not only throw down an amazing duds, but also, wow, because you're, yeah. you're you're only flying from 10 10 meters. Yeah, yeah, you have to, I think using props and kind of, uh, you know, like, like I've been saying, uh, throwing your own flair to it, it's exactly. just, it's just so important. And having a yo-yo, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody do a 360 with a yo-yo and then enter properly in duds. That was, that was cool. That, that was super great. cool. That is pretty great. This also shows you the dedication these Dutch fans have. It is this yeah. is a classic Norwegian summer day. We've got uh, we've got rain. We've got more rain in the forecast, but we've got <laughs> thousands of people out here watching yeah. these guys throw themselves off of the 10 meter because this is what we do here. This is Norway. If you're gonna if you're gonna do it in Norway, you have to brave the elements. Yeah. All right. Up next we have Christopher. Christoffel Tombalik from Norway. He's been in the game since he learned to walk. I mean, this guy, he ran Dave last year. He's sponsored by Moped Beal. He's got a, he, he, he's, he is a staple in the sport, but also an up and He is such a rad guy. He loves Dudzin. All right. That is called the shrimp roll. He goes in, he hits a pike. He does a 360 down, lands in Duds. That's, that's one of his staple tricks. He even does that in a double sometimes, but I mean, he looks so dialed. He's super smooth throughout the whole axis. He lands properly. And he lands in Crusher, so that was something that uh, we were talking about. There's a bunch of different entries, and he hits with his forearms on that. And he knows how to take it, take an impact for sure. He loves studsing. Um, our, our judges are, you know, they've set the bar high. And I think uh -huh. it's great. I think it's great. We're, they're pushing people to. They want to see something that hasn't been done before. They want to see you know? a world champion. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, this is a Ooh, winner. That was of cool. The Dutch World Tour Lillison. What did he just throw down? Oh, the fans stoked. Um, so he just did, he did a gainer full, but he lays it out like that, where he like poses real quick. He lands in Crusher, he has a big splash. I think it was a proper entry. Um, man, yeah, to like, to hit that rotation that quick and then stall it out and like lay it out. That was really unique. I love seeing that. Let's see what the judges think. Judges rolling in. All right. Seventh, rank seven. Seven point seven. Seven point three three. Okay. We are. Uh, we're 17 athletes through, and our 18th is. Uh, you know, he does not need a trick. No. He, uh, he is a. He's a legend. He's a legend in the sport. He's been doing this forever. Seaman Fisk. He is the biggest showman the sport has to offer. Oh my God. Yeah. Speaks for himself. Speaks for himself. <laughs> <laughs> but he 
he's also the nicest and like he's the best ambassador the sport has to. He is so down to earth. He's a superstar, but you won't meet a friendlier guy on the world tour. No. No. Oh, see you in. Also, you might not meet a guy with a higher level of a threshold of pain tolerance. Oh my God, I've seen him do an ass blaster from over 20 meters, you know? And he uh, he over rotated that a little bit, unfortunately. I know he really wanted to put that one down, but notice how he goes a little bit over to his right side. Uh, the judges are probably gonna deduct for that, but it doesn't take away from how great of a human this guy is and how in his level and like passion for testing. Rolling in at 15. A 5.7 puts him in 15th out of 18 so far. We've got a few more judges coming up in this first round. We're still doing freestyle. This is Jogen from Norway. He's the winner of the Dutch in Stockholm this year. Oh my god. So he does a 180 one direction and then rewinds it back the other way. So he does a 180 spot and literally brings it back the other direction. This dude spins like clockwork. It's just insane. Uh, how, how hard is that to do midair? Uh, really hard. Like it's, it's just so difficult to stop your rotation and do it the opposite way. And you have to set so specifically in order to just make that happen. And not only does he do, do it, he has ample time to enter the water, pose, and, you know, showcase some style with it. Right. This might be arguably the biggest superstar in this world, the most up and coming. Halman Sulsta is from Norway. The kid is 12 years old. Yeah, I mean, it blows <laughs> my mind. <laughs> oh, this kid. So he does. Man, that is just so cool. That's kind of something that I had never seen before he started doing it. It's it's a uh, it's a gain. It's like a gainer 180 into like a, a double front flip half. Uh, you could say like it's a it's an Arabian into a front half. And he goes straight to a no-hander. No hands needed for the 12-year-old. <laughs> Puts him in second. Whoa. Puts him in second place. I mean, this kid, he, he, him and his team won the Battle of the Tower earlier in February when we did our team competition. They are rock stars. And Sigma was a part of that team. Sigma was a part of it, yeah. Again, 12 years old. Throwing himself and off. Him and Herman have just been absolutely crushing this year. They've taken the sport by storm. Oh, I love the style with it. He does a Misty 7 with the mute grab. So you see him grab his feet and pull it back. He tweaks it. And that just adds so much style. That's op mute, actually. Opposite mute grab. Nice, dude. That's sick. That was so sick. So he did land feet heavy, unfortunately. Um, I think the judges will probably deduct a little bit for that, but man, that that trick is just so cool. I love I love seeing the skier style tricks in this sport. It's so cool what you can bring into it just based upon your background. For those of you just joining us, we are in the first round of the Dead's Vegan World Championship. In 2023, freestyle round, we've gotten through 21 athletes. We've got three left. This is Alexander Fulstam. <laughs> oh, gosh. Man, he is also hitting the grabs. He's also showcasing a little bit of a skiing background. He goes in, he grabs truck driver. He opens up, just no movement. It's just so fluid and smooth. I mean, that's exactly what the judges want to see. Like, he is not sweating it at all in the air. He just sees so much control. Perfect oh, entry. God. I mean, th this guy this guy scored very well last year, years prior. 7.02 to 
207, puts him in ninth place in this first round. Now we've got Tuchel Volgan. Ranked third in the World Championship last year. He competed with a broken hand after he broke the... Oh my. I can't even get through my own sentence before these guys do something insane and I, just, I have to stop because it, it, it's, it's unbelievable. The ability to take an impact like these guys know how to do. It's like... A... So he did a front flip and he tweaks it open, I think. In US we call that a flying squirrel when you tweak open like that. And then he just enters in a cannonball on his head. <laughs> That's so this wild. Is, this, is in, this guy. So wild. He, last year in the World Championship, he came in third place. He broke his hand, I think it was maybe two weeks before, breaking the world record. For the highest duds. For the highest duds. And 31 meters? Is that yeah, right? it was almost, I think it was 31, oh. yeah. And he, uh, I don't think, last year he landed with his hands at all. He just did no-handers. And it's, it's crazy, you know? You just get used to this, the entries and you get dialed and it starts to just become like a normal way to do these things. Okay, we got, uh, we got Mini Kim up next. Uh, he's been in the sport for so long. He's a two-time world champion as well, I believe. Uh, Came in second last year at the world championship. He is one of the most stylish dozers out there. Uh, he's known for some of his unique tricks, uh, unique way of doing things. Also a huge ambassador for the sport, pushing the limits of what it means to be a dozer, and is really just Unbelievably talented. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's his signature trick right there. He does a 360, he shifties, he tweaks, and then he he kicks over. Look at that. Shifty, open. Oh, he grabbed his ankles too. He hit that flying squirrel position. That's awesome, Kim. Uh, man, just look at the control. Like, he just knows where he is. Um, and that comes from just years of experience, years of practice. Just looking so dialed in the air. Good entry. Let's see what the judges think. Okay, 6.9. All right, that is our first round completed. We've come through 24 athletes. First round was freestyle. They're all going to get a second jump again, freestyle in round two, and then the average of the or the best score of those two rounds will be the score that they take further. You got it. Um, we have had an amazing first round. It has been, you know, the athletes are pushing the level of creativity. The athletes are pushing the level of difficulty. And now we're gonna get a quick recap of everything that we've seen so far. Yep. So we're recapping. Uh, so how we started it off was just really cool. We have uh, members of the Norwegian Armed Forces doing duds, showcasing that this is a national sport. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, the first round just went off without a hinge. Uh, we saw some really unique stuff, really creative. Uh, kind of just pushing the sport in directions that you might not necessarily have thought were possible. So. And this was, I mean, this was, this was a really cool way to kick things off. Having the national, yep. uh, the Armed Forces Band set the tone, gives you chills, makes you feel like, all right, you know, this, this is serious. This is, I'm going to, I'm going to battle here. And uh, that's sometimes what these athletes are thinking. It's gotta be, I, I'm going to, I'm competing. They are, they're all, really good friends and the community itself i mean is it's amazing they have a special bond between each other but when the, uh, and when they're competing here they're also competing against each other it yep. is a uh, you know they're trying to win but at the same time the brotherhood the sisterhood the camaraderie the family it is one of the parts that makes makes the the sport so great absolutely
so patriotic, so amazing to see uh, these armed forces doing duds. All right, next up we have Ken Storns. This was a highlight. This, was, uh, this is such a highlight. Gives you chills. He has, uh, he's super in touch with his Norwegian heritage, <laughs> and I think he can see the energy. <laughs> The axe. I look, I look, I have chills. I've got chills. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> He's also, you know, one of the coolest things about this sport. You know, we've got the competitions themselves are amazing and they're growing so fast. They're getting bigger every year. But there is a whole ecosystem around this sport that is also exploding at the same time. It is, I mean, the level of views these guys are getting on their social medias, the amount of attention and crowd. This sport is really, really starting to take off, not only as, like, the sport itself, but the, the entire family of Dead's fans is getting bigger and bigger and more dedicated. It is wild to see, and he's a perfect example. Having his video kind of retweeted by Elon Musk, Yeah, it's, kind of, it's yeah. Like surreal to think something that started here at Folk Nobanda in Oslo is now, you know, on Fox News, on CNN. Like, it, it, it's, it's international. It's international. It's, it's crazy. And it's... There's all different avenues that this sport is going down right now. You know, there's a, there's just like a filming style aspect. There's like, uh, like Thrills and Kim are doing YouTube videos. Uh, then we have people like Ken. We have people that are, uh, you know, just showcasing on social media. We have people that are just hitting high heights. Uh, there's so many different ways to express yourself in this sport. And it's not just about the competitive scene. Um, it is about the full expression of like the artistry and here <clears throat> here are judges and uh, we are going to go over and interview the last year's female world champion. All right, guys, I'm here with Ospiak today. She's known as the Queen of Dots. Uh, two years in a row, you've been world champion. How do you feel about this year? Uh, I'm excited. I mean, the level is higher than it's ever been, but also I'm nervous. I mean, I, I got a de title to defend, so definitely nervous, yeah. A little bit of pressure on you today? Definitely, I feel the pressure a lot, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so every year uh, so far, there's been more and more women. Uh, joining for the dancing. How do you feel about that? I think that's so much fun. I'm working all year and especially in the summer to recruit more girls and trying to help them raise a level, making myself more competition. So I think it's so cool. I have Kim and Tore with me today. So Kim, I'm going to start with you. 2019, last time you were here, you won the world championship. How do you feel about it today? Don't really feel much about 2019. It's 2023 now. Obviously, gonna try and do the same, but got really tough competition next to me and behind me. Yeah. So both of you last year were in the semifinals. Um, so I know Tore, you uh, did a quad and didn't quite land it last year. Are you gonna go for a crazy trick again or something safe this year? Uh, I don't even know. Like. I think I'm just gonna try some new shit yeah. <laughs> on the top of the tower, so I don't know what, to, what I'm gonna do yet. See what the vibes of everyone else is and then go from there. Yeah. Now I'm here with Ryan Bean and Johnny Nyberg, the two USA Dodgers besides Reagan Popoff today. How are we feeling, guys? Feeling all right, ready to get in this water and do some tricks. We got some uh, beautiful Norwegian weather. I'm super excited to jump. Uh, it's gonna be a great day. The light rain is awesome today. Nothing better than a little light rain to start it off. <laughs> what are we most nervous about? Honestly, just making sure I don't mess up my trick the first round like last year. But uh, yeah, I think I got it dialed this year. Biggest thing is making it past the first round today. Yeah, I mean, we're in Norway. This is the, the home of where it all started, so we're with the best of the best. I'm just, I'm nervous overall, but we've trained for this moment, and uh, I'm excited to represent. It's going to be a good time. All right, this, now you're taking a look at the results of the first round. Um, we just got through 24 athletes who did their first round of freestyle, and Reagan Popoff is in our first spot. Eight points. 
Here's a look at the 13 to 24. Now, like we said, uh, these are not the final scores. We have an entire other round where we are taking the best score from all of the athletes. Uh, so if an athlete didn't quite put down what they wanted to, we give them another chance to throw down, maybe try a new trick, maybe retry a trick that they didn't quite get how they wanted to, and uh, try and get that top eight for the next round. Here's your list of the uh, the next. This is how this is the order we're going to go in in round two. Yep. So we basically flipped the script. So the last place person from round one is going first, and then the top place is going last. And exactly like John said, this is their second chance. So if they weren't happy with their first score, they've got a, another chance at a freestyle to qualify it for the next round. Up first, we got Jean Combe. He is living in Bergen, I believe, and look at this. <laughs> First year Dudzing, and you can see the stoke. He absolutely loves it. Points at the judges, rolls over. A variation of a front flip half, kind of called a matrix flip. His scores roll in. This is going to be his second and final score. All right. 6.07. Slight improvement. Okay. All right, Jean Combe. So like we said, 24 athletes are going to get their second try right now. Of those 24, the top eight are going to move on to the battle rounds. <laughs> Hi, I'm Combe. I'm from France, and this is my second time in the Dust World Championship. My goal this year is uh, first to have fun, a lot of fun nail my tricks because I have some new tricks that I want to do this year. In May, I set the world record for uh, the highest that's ever done. It was a uh, 34.25 meter high. It felt amazing. It was so long in the air, but uh, I'm ready to go higher. <laughs> that's that mentality we love. Yeah. This guy, uh... Again, just a psycho. <laughs> just amazing, amazing person. <laughs> amazing, but just pushes the limit of what is yeah. supposed to be possible yeah. all the time. All the time. Let's see what he's got for his second score. Ooh. Oh, right on. If you saw, he had an early exit from the platform, which is pretty cool. Uh, and he's, he hand drags. You see him drag off a little bit of water. He hits that pose midair, flexes on the judges a little bit, and then right into Crusher. Oh, Boom. Creativity right there. That is cool. Uh, Calm is definitely, he likes the impact. I've talked to him about this. He's asked me, don't you like the impact? And I was like, yeah, it's okay. And uh, he's like, I love it. That's what I crave. And you can see it just in how he does his and his smile afterwards. Like, this is, this is his sport. All right, we've got the kiss down up now from Norway. Okay, he got third, uh, his first score, I'm sure he wasn't stoked on. So now he's got a second chance to redeem himself. Again, top eight out of these 24 are going to the next round. Oh. All right, well, not entirely sure. I'm assuming he was going for some sort of front double, like front full and a half, something like that, because he did turn 180. He was going, uh, yeah. He's trying to do early plant 360, kind of like a 360 backflip to duds, but obviously too much momentum, landed on his feet. Judges are, that wasn't a duds, so. This is a, uh, you know, a lot of, the, there's a lot of diving sports in the world that you want to land on your feet. This one, you want to you land on your face. Yeah. That's, uh, that's why we love it so much. Hi, I'm Sima Fisk and I'm from Norway. And this is my fifth world championship. And this year I qualified and I'm really happy about that. What separates me from other death divers is that I dare doing everything. I'm here to compete against the best and I wanna be the best. And uh, I think I can win. I'm probably the hardest badass here. 
I am the hardest badass. <laughs> you gotta love the confidence. You gotta the, love the the crowd loves him. He, they, I mean, honestly, everybody in this sport loves him. Uh, the whole community. He's just he's treated everybody so well, so generous. Feel good. Come on. Look at that spot that he has while he's in the air. Eyeing down the judges. <laughs> he's looking straight at the judges. Oh, panel. man. Be like, you know what I just did. He's stoked. He's stoked to put that one down. So that's called a mute grab, what he's doing there. Uh, it uh, comes from skiing, and he put, he laced it up. He laced it up. Kind of an inward 360 mute grab. Big splash. Look at the spot. Look how he's just staring at the judges. That is extra points right there. The judges like seeing that. Coming up right to the camera, right to the fans. Everyone loves it. All right, Seaman. 7.1. Just out of that top qualifying for the semifinals, but it doesn't mean that was not so cool. <laughs> All right, next we got Christopher. Again, fan favorite here. This is a guy that really knows how to add style, flair, showmanship. Yep. Been around the sport. Woo! Let's see a recap on that. Eyes the judges. Does basically an inward. Uh, he hits the he hits the shrimp pose, and then just inward straight to crusher. Not necessarily the power that I think the judges are really looking for, but the entry was just perfect. Yeah. I mean, Matt, I don't think you could get much better than that. And I think you're uh, you're spot on. You're, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. It's a good. It's a clean duds. It was a clean duds. I mean. I would get stoked on that, but obviously the judges are looking for the next level. Right. The next level. Let's look at R2. We got R2 from Finland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1080. Yeah, yeah. 1080. That was sweet. That's the first 10 we've seen today. Uh, that's three rotations. For you, for you people that don't know, that's three 360s. One, two, three. He opens up, spots, enter. And. It looks clean. That's that's a hard trick to really keep on axis and land perfectly, hands and feet at the same time. And uh, he looks like he's super controlled during that. I haven't seen him do that. That was that was sick. Sick. Right on R2. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. 6.7, all right. The judges have seen 1080s before, you know. It's, I think that's that's the biggest thing. It's, I mean, that trick's been getting thrown for a long time now. And... All right. All right, this is Kapo. Let's hear a little word from him. Kapo Kosonen from Helsinki, first time here. My first competition in Helsinki, and I won and got Colton ticket in World Ch Championship. My plan is to do something crazy stuff, what uh, nobody can do. And I want to win today. Short, straightforward, to the point. Love the execution mentality. This guy, he... Needs to yeah. throw something crazy. Oh, my. <laughs> That looked wild in the air. Did he land? He landed that very well. I would say. I mean, the execution is really good. He does like uh, J step cork into double back out. So a triple to Duds with one full rotation in the first flip. Man, hits the cowboy tuck. This good entry. I wouldn't say the most textbook, but. I mean, the flip speaks for itself. Like, to do a triple off of a height this high and out in a full rotation, like, you need to have a lot of power in what you're trying to do. Let's see what the judges think. Got 
11th with that. Not quite cracking the top eight, but that's all right. We know the level of competition here today is just impeccable, so. It is really, really <laughs> pushing. I mean, it, it's, these are all great judges, and they're showing us that we need to be at the top. Hey, my name is Tore Woge. I'm from uh, Lyngdal, uh, and this is the fourth time I'm in uh, the World Championship. <laughs> in my first time I did a death dive was in uh, 2018. Uh, I lost the bets, and I had to do a death dive from the 10 meter. And it was like, I liked it. So from that, I have done a lot of it. The reason why I stand out is uh, my really hard landings and the steeds in the air. Next up, we've got Tour de Borge. Again. Again, Tore got third last year. Previous world record holder for the highest duds. He has the stoke, he has the energy. Oh. Clock spin three. Man, that is so cool. So if, if you look at what he's doing there, he is running off into a straight classic. However, he has the control mid-air to rotate and do a full 360. So he does the 180, you see how he spots over the judges, and then he does it, con continues into the 360, boom, boom, and then straight into a no-hander. This man does not land with his hands, even when they are good. <laughs> it looked like, it looked like he really got far out there. That, yeah. That's something they're looking yeah. for as well, right? The judges yeah. are trying to see how far off the platform, how much power do you have coming out of that? They want to see you almost hit the other side of the pool. Right, exactly. Like, if the further out you go, the better it looks. Like, they want to see you as a projectile. Uh, they want to see just like this fluid, uh, parabolic motion off of the tower. And uh, so, Torres Four cool. coming in, putting him in ninth place, just cutting him off from the next round, where we're taking top eight athletes out of 24. Right now, we've got the 24 of the best athletes in the world dancing for eight spots, and the competition hasn't been higher. I mean, we're, it is really show, we're, we're showing, they're showing us that they are expecting okay, this is the world tour. <laughs> here comes Pacom. And Pacom is really hyping up everybody. The Spanish prince right here, about to throw down. <laughs> did he quite make that around? I think, I think he kind of did. Basically did the same thing that Tura just did. It's cool, uh, Pacom encompasses both aspects of diving. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Did he get... It's, it's hard to tell with that last camera angle. Let's oh, see. But he's far. Man. Oh my god. The stall. The stall up until he spins is just insane. Oh my god. Air time. He has so much control in the air. Uh, like I was saying, he encompasses both aspects of freestyle diving. He does duds and he does freestyle cliff diving. Um, he didn't quite get that around, unfortunately, and the judges deducted points for it. Doesn't mean he did not look sick in the air. Does not mean that. Uh, and that's just, you know, it's just how the sport goes. All right, we got a video coming up of Sigva, the 12-year-old here. Let's see what he has to say. I'm Sigve, I'm 12 years old, and I'm from Norway. This is my third time in the World Championship. Four years ago, I saw Dutching on my YouTube uh, for you page, and then I wanted to try it, and now I'm uh, a professional Dutcher. Last year, I got 10th place. This year, I want to beat that. Like we said earlier, this kid's 12 years old. I, I can't even come out of my mouth without having being shocked. The kid's 12 years old, and he's already competed in three world championships. To, to say that the future of this sport is in, is in good hands is an understatement. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh. wow, he's got to be happy with that. That was so sick. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so he uh, he does a front flip, does a full 360, so fast, and then perfect entry. 
Man, that looks so good the whole way through. The whole way through, just calm, collected. He knows what he's doing. And you can see when he comes out of the water, he is stoked. It's gotta be. He's stoked he put that down. Let's see what these scores got. All right. Got 12. Stiff competition this year, for sure. Next up, Ryan Bean. This guy, he's crazy. Let's hear from him. My name is Ryan Bean. I'm from St. George, Utah, and this is my second time at the World Champions. I qualified for the World Champions about two or three weeks ago in the Tennessee Duds Comp. My goal this year is to at least make it into the next round because last year I totally landed on my feet and did a trick that I probably shouldn't have done. So, different tricks this year. All right, let's see what Ryan is going to put down. This guy is one of the most talented dancers. It flippers as far yeah, as I just, understand it. Just I've like ever seen. multi talented flipping athlete. He does everything. <laughs> All right. Double front flip to Flying Squirrel. He had a lot of power on that. He's smiling. That's good. Let's see if we get another angle. Yeah, there we go. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. All right, Ryan, I see you, man. That was sick. Holds that flying squirrel the whole way through the second. The whole way through the second flip. Entry looked good, uh, maybe slight early close, but we'll see. We'll see what the judges think. Big splash. That was a sick splash. <laughs> Arn is stoked. Here come our scores. All right, 16. Yeah, so the judges are really being... Uh, they're setting the bar high. They're setting the bar high. They're being critical on how you enter the water. Yeah. That's a huge part of Dudzing is the entry. It's got to look so dialed, so perfect. Now we've got Kim on there. He is, uh, you know. He got second last year. Second uh, year. Two-time world I champ. I know he's not quite in the top right now, and I know he's hoping to change that yeah. on this jump. So let's see what he throws. Oh. Front flip to 360 to Duds. Comes up stoked. Comes up stoked. I know he's, uh, he's really just got that style. You see how he spots the judges right off the bat? Has that perfect entry. Like, that is a textbook entry. That's what everybody wants to see. Points, front flip, 360, open, straight, and shrimp. Like, man. Boom. I just love watching him do duds. It's He's always a pleasure. That, uh, I've heard from all of the dutchers. All right. Putting him in the fifth. Puts him in the five. He is now in the top eight, but he, he is someone okay. that, you know, I've heard is so diligent on his practice. He is, he is like, he's at the pool all the time, trying new tricks, really pushing himself, being creative. But it's a prime example of someone who, you know, crafts his, his sport. He yeah. is dedicated to being skillful at this. Speaking of crafts his sport, we have Jurgen, who is also an incredibly dedicated to Zer. Uh, man. So he did a 720 right there, uh, but in the second rotation, he grabs both of his ankles and tweaks them back. Uh, I know that as a flying squirrel. They might have a different name for it in Norwegian. And then he enters like no-handed cannonball. Yeah. Man. Judge's score is rolling in. Yeah. They like that. Yes, they do. They like that. All right. Point eight seven. Seems like he's going to advance to the final. Right on here again.
Hi, my name is Raven, or Raven in English. I'm from Oslo, Norway, and this is my eighth time competing in the World Championship. I qualified to the World Championship in the second competition this year, and then I got the golden ticket. It's really nice to finally be back at my third home. It's where my parents have like taken me when I was a child and taken off my leash and like let me be me, yeah. My goal is to win this year. The hometown kid coming to throw down where he has learned to duds. That has to feel so good. Amazing. To be jumping where you feel the most comfortable. Let's see what he's got. This guy is so full of energy and just... Wow. <laughs> so gas. So cool. Another guy that just loves to be in the air, loves the sport of deads. Man. Is super, super skillful. That's kind of like a shrimp roll, but doesn't quite hit the shrimp. I think they call that a sausage roll right there. I think that's what it's called. Man, just the smooth, like, he knows where he is in the air the whole time. All right, judges didn't like that, but hey, it is what it is. All right, Elias Tridal is our next dead sir. He is trying to elevate his score to get into that top eight. Make sure he stays there. Let's see what he's got. 720, a lot of power, late close. You can hear that slap when he enters the water. That's always, that's always good to hear. That's like one of my favorite sounds, honestly. <laughs> so. Smooth, collected in the air. Kind of boost off the platform. Had to kind of flail to get it around just a tad, so we'll see what the judges think of that. But I mean, hey, that's a that's a spectacle to watch, regardless. Judges scores coming in. All right, six point seven three puts him in seventeen. Again, I mean, it is just. The two of us sitting here in awe of most of these jumps. But it, it is, it's just an example of how intense this competition is. These guys are really pushing it. And a jump like that just isn't, isn't enough to be yeah. in the top eight. Yeah, it's just, really, a, it's just a testament to how high the level is. Yeah, it really is. All right, Alex on the full stop. Sending it now. Ooh. To me, is like a gainer cork three to duds. But I know they call that. Oh, yep. Gainer cork three with a safety grab. Oh, that is so sick. I love his like incorporation of skier tricks mm. into dudsing. Um, I was, we were seeing a lot of that from him last year as well. And he just looks so strong in the air and so smooth. He's one of, one of my favorites to watch out here. All right, that puts him in 13. He's out here having fun, but fortunately didn't make it to the next quarter. Next. All right, Ole is our next athlete. Let's get a little clip from him. My name is Ole. I'm from Oslo, Norway, and this is my first time in the World Championship. I qualified in Lillesand. In the competition in Lillesand, I did a front flip on the ground, and I think the judges really liked that. Well, I sort of feel like the underdog because I just came into the game this year with the depth diving competitions, but I think it's going to be fun. All right, Ole Bunegrita. Hyping up the crowd, knows that that's part of the scores. Let's see what he's going to throw for us. Ooh. So he did a pre front flip and a front flip full to duds. Huh, that is so creative. I feel like we've seen a lot of, you know, stuff happening up on the tower. 
Dang. more often than, or at least more than we've seen in a lot of other competitions. Like yeah. Three flip kind of. Uh... Yeah, you're seeing a lot of athletes really utilize their surroundings. Mm. Um, and it seems like that's what's been scoring the best is uh, really, you know, trying to trying to look at Dudsing in a new light. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Look at that. 7.8. 7.8. Yeah, that the makes him. Top. He's in the top. He's in the top eight. We'll see if anybody can bump out, bump him out. But uh, that seems like a pretty secure spot to move on to the next round. All right, up next, we have Arna Hogland telling us a little bit about himself. I'm Arna Hogland. I'm from Bergen, and I've been competing in that since 2013, so it's going to be my 11th world champion. Uh, since this is going to be my last world champion, it's all about having fun. Make a little bit show, try to watch the guys, cheer it up, hype everybody to do something insane so we can laugh the whole night about it. Gotta love that mentality, gotta love that approach to the competition. He's definitely someone who pushes himself, but at the same time, makes sure that he ha is having fun while he's doing it. And I think that's the essence of this sport. It's the essence of what these athletes love. It, the competitions are amazing, and it, it is, you know, it's the bones, but at the same time, uh, they all have this love for doing this together, pushing themselves, pushing the limit, and oh, that just embodies that in, in the best way possible. Psyching himself up, getting ready, being the showman he is. He's thinking about this one. I'm curious what he's going to do. This, this is going to be a. Uh, I mean, it is still crazy. Uh-huh. Oh. Almost. Almost. He had had another half a second there. Yep. Another two meters. I think that would have been perfect. But I saw him do that off of a 15-meter platform, I believe, and he just did a double backflip. So, you know, subtract five meters. That's... Can probably take it to duds, but just almost. Almost, but... I love, love seeing where his head's at for that. Again, comes up smiling, knows he didn't necessarily get the score he wanted, but at the same time, enjoying himself. Big smile on his face. Yep. He, uh, he approaches it in the right way, and he's, he's having a great time doing it. Yeah, I think that is the biggest thing about this sport. All these athletes jump together. They all know each other. It's a huge family, and while they're pushing each other to throw down their best tricks. This is Oscar. <laughs> oh, laid out front flip to duds. This is just a huge session, and it's so cool to see. What do we got here? Got a little bit off axis on that. I don't know how the judges are gonna respond but the first part of that looks so nice. Yeah, he landed on his side, unfortunately. It's one of our youngest competitors, though. One of the youngest competitors, newest to the sport, and is really, again, you know, these guys are <laughs> 12, 13, 14, 15 years old and competing at the highest level in one of the mo in the fastest growing sports in the world. And, you know, if they, he might not have gotten the score he wanted this time, he definitely has a long career ahead of him Absolutely. To, uh, to come back. But it's just, again, it, 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 it's really, really fun to see these young guns, these young guys really. Uh, He's checking the rail again. Good. Yeah. What is Martin thinking? I don't know. Oh, my gosh. All right, foot plant. Pull in back out to Duds. Let's get another angle and see if he landed that. All right. 
He put that around, absolutely. A little feet heavy. That was close. But, man. Wow. Just, like, what he's doing right there is so, so unique, so inventive. And you can see it across his, the faces of the crowd. Everyone's like, what did yeah. I just see? We have judges scores. Whoa. All right. All right. All right. Improving from the last one. Keeping him in fifth. Yep. He's a uh, fifth. Up next, we got Thrills. This is an energy machine. <laughs> this guy is just, he is an energizer bunny. Let's see what he does. What did we just see? He knows he's in the top. He knows he's qualifying for the next round. He's just having fun. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Flying from that tower. So much power. And just. Hits the cannonball pose and boom. just right in. Straight on his head. Straight on his head. Egg drop. Just bam. Splashing the crowd a little bit. Yes! <laughs> it's like, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He knows he's in. He knows he's in. Mm -hmm. Um, 
hemma i Tors, satte mig lite mer in i och tänkte ut av i alla fall efter det så här då att de kom gransen sen till att bli syk det är en skott som var att Chase of Norway stilla med diverse av solbrillar och t-skjortar och hvis du har lyst til å kle deg da med litt grann av merch fra Dødsefederasjonen så er det der noe kjøpe oppe rett inn på inngangen der det er noen fete kapser og noen t-skjortar og handebånd og det ene og det andre. Så vi trenger vel kanskje ikke være en rakettforsker for å skjønne at vi har noen tekniske problemer. Vi har blitt lovet at vi skal være tilbake ganske fort, så er du litt tissetrengt. Kanskje dette er tiden til å løpe på noen. Kanskje du har lyst til å spise litt kjolade. Da kan du gå opp til digen oppe med inngangen og få, ja, nå har du bedre sjokolade med en spist. Det vil ha en nytte mulighet til å fortelle dere om serien på YouTube som heter Home of Dutz, som Dutzeforbundet og Dutzeforbundet lagde i fjor. Det er en hel sesong der vi intervjuer flere dødsene, og jeg får høre litt hvordan de kom inn i sporten, og hva som får dem til å pushe grensene sine. Der blir de i dag fra klipper og stupetorn, og det som gir dem muligheter for å kaste disse sinnssyke manøvrene ut fra de høyeste og skumleste høyder. Yeah, we're here. We're here. All 
All right, we are back. And, uh, you know, part of doing this thing in Norway, you have to brave the elements. We've got a storm hitting us right now, and uh, it's just traditional Viking style. That's that's what we got to do. We live, we, we work through it. We, we've got an amazing technical team that is uh, powering through this rain. And we're going to kick off again here as soon as we're allowed to. Yep. Uh you know how it is. Uh, electronics don't like water. No, they don't. <laughs> and it's. Um, but look, the fans are here. They're so, powering through. This is this is a normal day in Norway. This is like not even people don't even blink an eye. It's like oh, it's raining. It's what? Is, yeah, which is this is the middle of the summer. What did you tell me? Uh, the the past like yeah. two months, it's rained over 40 days. Yeah. If you ask a Norwegian about uh, this summer, they're there. They'll be like. This wasn't even summer. I think we had 40 rain days out of 47. This is it. I'm not giving the greatest commercial for Norway right now. I love I love Norway. And it's the best place ever. Um, you just have to you just have to be uh, prepared for a little rain. That's yeah. all. Which these guys are. Look at them. Die hard fans. <laughs> Die hard fans. A little rain doesn't stop us. No. It's uh this is definitely something that can complicate uh, death diving is when it's raining. So like the platform's probably a little slippery. Uh, it's a little cold out there. Not exactly ideal for jumping in the water. However, the fact that we're still seeing some of the craziest <laughs> craziest tricks uh, that Carl and I have both ever witnessed is so impressive to me. And I mean, you see, it's cold. They're sitting by a fire right now, yep. uh, trying to stay warm, trying to stay ready. Does the rain affect you at all while you're in the air? While you're in the air, no. You don't notice uh, it. Either. I mean, yeah, I think you have enough adrenaline and enough like like focus that you're not you're not necessarily paying attention to a little water falling. Yeah. Uh, and how about the temperature? I mean, uh, yeah. temperature I think affects your motivation to jump. Yeah, is that, the biggest thing because you're like I, I, me personally, at least when it's cold out. Uh, I'm just a little less likely to be doing like, crazy I'm things. I'm throw myself into a pool right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, especially you know when you're just you're just in swim trunks. Right. Um, but technically, on, on the technics of it, it's you know the, the platform is a little bit more is is way more wet. You have to be you know these guys are sprinting full speed off of that platform, so they have to be really aware of. Um, yeah, we can't have any slipping. That's yeah. And again, you're at you're at 33 feet. Yeah. So it's uh, it's high stakes. You slip at 33 feet and flop, it does not feel good. No. It does not feel good. Our safety crew, these guys are making sure that when these guys, when they land, they come up, they're all is good, making sure that they are well fed. Important to me. Uh, make sure you've got the nutrition in you. For those of you that are just joining us, are still around, we are in the second round of the men's freestyle. So we've had, we had a first round with the 24 athletes where everyone jumped a freestyle jump, everyone got a score, and now we're in round two where it's the reverse order of those who scored the most points. And everyone's trying to get into the top eight. So of these 24 male athletes, we have eight of which are going to the next round. And right now we are about halfway through round two. Um, we have a few more athletes uh, waiting for their second jump. Um, and uh, this is towards the top of the leaderboard right now, uh, based upon the first round results. So up now, it looks like we have Johnny Nyberg. Yes, sir. Is he ready? Oh, he's ready. Johnny's going to give us a little, uh, give us a little note on what he... Uh, what do you think? Hello, my name is John Nyberg. Uh, most people know me as Johnny Goes Hard. I am from Dallas, Texas, United States of America. This is my second year at the uh, Dutch World Championships. Super excited to be back. Last year, um, no one but Norwegians made it to the second round. And uh, this year is not going to be the same. I know for a fact that we're going to get a better representation of all the countries involved. I'm hoping to see a podium with no Norwegians on it this year. Would be, uh, would be the dream come true. Oof. Gotta love that inter-country rivalry. He is the Texas Stoke with him. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. All right, Johnny.
720 late close. It's too easy, he says as it comes up. Too easy. Let's see it. Hits that. Rotates around. Just always looking so smooth in the air. Love how he puts his hands back on that second rotation. And he's got proper does entries. Uh, fun fact about Johnny, he used to have a platform in his backyard into a pond in Texas where he learned all of his dudzing technique. All right. Johnny's sitting in third right now. He's doing exactly what he came out to do, which is make it to the next round. All right. We're back with the fan favorite, the young gun. Hamon, let us know what you're thinking. Hi, my name is Herman. I'm 12 years old, and uh, this is my uh, second time being in the World Championship. I think I'm um, uh, best at doing uh, like uh, flips and spins and stuff. So last year I ended up in uh, 15th place, and uh, this year I want I want to come higher. All right. Well, I think right off the bat we know Herman is doing a lot better than 15th place. <laughs> Just seeing the amount of improvement he's made in the last year, uh, he's kind of coined his own tricks, and at 12, that's incredible. Oh, wow! <laughs> that's just what I'm talking about. Man, that is so cool. He just looks so good in the air, and to be that young and that dialed is, it's just, it's just another level of execution. 360 to front flip to a late 360 into duds. Man, and he thought he couldn't do better than his first jump. <laughs> oh, so wow, sick. Wow, wow, wow. This kid is taking the, store, the sport by storm. Yeah. What did the judges think? Stays in second place. Didn't quite top his round one score, but you know he's stoked. Stoked to put down another trick to his feet that's just so technical, so well done. All right, we got Mr. Popoff. My name is Reagan Popoff. I'm from Plano, Texas, and this is my first time at the Dodds World Championships and in Norway, so I'm stoked. I think what makes me different than other death divers is that I'm not primarily a death diver. I'm primarily a freestyle cliff jumper. My goal this year is to have fun, you know, just to enjoy Norway, enjoy meeting everyone, you know, just have a good time. If you can't have fun doing it, what's the point? I love that mentality. What is the point if you're not having fun? This is why we all do this stuff. It's exactly. enjoyable. We want to experience flight. Reagan got the best score of the first round. And so he is a lock for round two. And he is just enjoying himself, but also going hard. Yeah. He qualified as number one for the quarterfinals. And he is just enjoying the airtime, enjoying Frogner Vedette. Look, checking out the judges. Looking good in the air. Playing the air guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Playing the air guitar, yeah. <laughs> Shaking it out. Something that's so unique with him, he just has so much power jumping yeah, off the platform. Yeah, I gotta wear it. Let's go down and uh, let's hear a little bit from Reagan. All right, Reagan, how are we feeling? You number one still? Pretty shocked, honestly, but yeah. stoked, you know? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't kidding earlier in the interview when we said the Norwegians are gonna have a problem today, so. Hey, they're having a problem now. Yeah. But we're all having a good time. It's nice, the weather's perfect, you know? So, nothing can go better. Feeling confident real, so far? Real, real quick, the Texans are on top right now. <laughs> uh, Norway, welcome to Texas. This is how we do it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> That's Johnny for y'all. Feeling confident that you're gonna continue number one and win the competition? We'll see. Well, All right. Fun. Yeah, sounds good, Reagan. We'll see you out there. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That is incredible from the two Texans.
These are our round two results. Reagan coming in at the top spot, Herman taking at number two, and John Nyberg grabbing the third spot. The top eight of these athletes will be making it into the next round, where we will have a classic battle format. But first, we're gonna have our women athletes compete yeah. in freestyle. That is gonna be a riot. Our uh, women are going to be doing one round of freestyle, I believe, and uh, it's quite a step up from last year. Uh, just what is uh, what the females are now throwing down? The level has increased like twofold, I'd say, almost threefold. Uh, we have uh, people like Aspirg, for example, winning the competition mm. in Utah against men which is just insane. Never happened before. And our first one is Sydney Kowalski from the US. She's gonna give us a little bit of insight. My name is Sydney Kowalski. I'm from Minnesota in the USA, and this is my first time in the Dodds World Championship. I'm a traditional head first 10 meter diver, and about a month ago, there was a competition in Park City where they had death diving as an event. And I kind of tried really hard and gave it my all, and qualified and now we're here. <laughs> Placing on the podium wouldn't be too bad either. I think that would be a really cool thing to do after only starting for a month. Sydney is joining us all the way from the US. Her first ever competition was in Utah a month ago and now she's standing atop the Duds World Tour Tower in the national in the world championship and really knows how to get this crowd going. <laughs> wow. Whoa. You see the shock on their face. It's just crazy. When you have a great background in diving, you can implement those things to dud so well. And look at that, look at that entry. Wow. Man, so good. So that's a front flip with a 180 into a back flip. Call it a Sukahara to Duds. Bakashi spots the water on the first one, spots again on the second, and then right into a close. Let's see what the judges think on that. Let's go! Let's get a good start! Let's finish the game! She is fired up. Right on. Good reason. Starts off the women with a great score, 7.5. Setting the tone early. My name is Ellen Bergeron. I'm uh, from France, and uh, this is my first world championship in Oslo. I started jumping just for fun and uh, with a bunch of friends. So I discovered death diving this year, and I started practicing in May. So this is my second time competing in death diving. My goal is to uh, have fun and uh, try the podium. We saw her trying uh, something pretty technical yesterday into the pool at warm-ups, and I'm curious if she's gonna do just that in the first round. Here we go. Oh my. Oh hoo hoo! Gainer duds, gainer duds. She looks super smooth in the air, man. Like, like we've said time and time before, that is the most important aspect of this, is just kind of look effortless when you're floating through the air. Maybe a little head heavy on this? Yeah, yeah, a little head heavy. You know, like her knees landed, you know, not fully, uh, her knees weren't fully extended. Right. So, uh, while that can create a nice splash, uh, the judges do deduct points for landing on that. Right. Um, all right, 5.5. We will see how that plays out as our next five athletes go through for their freestyle jumps. Yeah, let's see. What Four of these athletes are going to go on to the next round. Now we've got Isadine Melby. She's only 15 years old. 
This is a tough girl and a motocross rider. Oh. So close. I love the intention there to, you know, take a shot at the judges. Kind of came up a little head heavy, under rotated the duds ever so slightly. But man, she steezed out that, that point and shooted the judges for sure. It's a little feet heavy, but yep. only 15. That's crazy. The youngest female competitor here. Uh, yep. So next up, we've got Helena Vian from Norway. She's just started dancing this year. Yeah. Uh, she runs a blog actually about dancing on YouTube. No so, kidding. Yeah. So she is one of. Uh, she's a fan, but also an athlete, a contributor to the sport, and. Let us see what she's about to throw down. All right, she did an inward three. Let's see if we can get another camera angle on that and uh, see how the entry went. Spots the judges. Good hands and feet entry. Nice close. It seems like she's smiling the whole way down. That's awesome. Big splash. Yeah. Boom. Right on. Scores are going to roll in. Let's see what the judges think. Stop that. All right. That puts her in second place. Right on, Elena. Like we said, we've got seven athletes jumping right now. The top four are going to go on to the next round. All right. Up next, we have Annette from Sonova, Team Sonova. She competed last year as well, and she has some steez in the air. Let's see what she's got. Right out of the gate. Oh, sick. We can't see, can't see the end ending, <laughs> but let's hope we get another camera angle of that, because I want to see that. That looked really good from the top view. Oh, wow. Yo, that was sick. Just no movement. Just takes off, sends it out, goes into like where she can close from and just holds it until she needs to close. Look at the splash. Dang, that was a big splash. Let's see. Judges like that. That's right. Cool. Cool, cool. Into second place. Another member of Team Sonova, Lena from Norway. She came in second in the World Championship last year, and I know that she is going for it all this year. Yep. Taking it to the next level. Open, nice entry, Lena. That was proper, proper. It is so cool to see that full extension too in the after the front flip, just like fully, yeah, just fully laid out. Bam. Yep. I, yeah. it, 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 I mean, it makes you look like you're suspended in air, uh -huh. and it is a. Uh, the, the score is reflected. The judges saw it. Seven point oh seven, rolling in at second place. I just like to see that. All right. All right, this is the legend, Asbjörg. She is a, uh, yeah, she doesn't even need words. My name is Asbjörg Nasche. Uh, I'm from Trondheim in Norway, and this is gonna be my fourth world championships. And my goal will be to try and defend my title from last year. Uh, I won the world championships the two uh, previous years, so I'm gonna try and defend my title, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the weather is not the best today, so I think it's awesome that so many of you uh, showed up anyways. I mean, we jumpers uh, are going to get wet anyway, so it's so cool that you want to join us in this show evening. <laughs> All right. The reigning world champ herself. 
and she also took first place in Utah. Yes. She beat all the boys, proved that women in this sport are just as talented, can compete just as hard, and she is a rock star. Yeah. Knows how to own the tower. Great energy. She's comfortable up there. She said she was nervous, but it doesn't look like it. <laughs> no, she's in the zone now. Ooh, dang. 720 duds, just textbook clean, floaty. There's no flailing, there's no like lack of comfort in the air. She's just, she's just doing it, you know? In that flow state of mind, just perfect execution. Arms back, laid out, like that is what the judges want to see. Proper entry too, I mean, Look at the entry, just, yep. man, feet, hands, same time. Big splash, she's up right before her splash is done. That was... She's in first. She's yep. in first, the judges saw it, it was reflected in her score. Rightfully deserved. Now we're gonna go down and have a little chat with her. All right, Aspiag. You were nervous before we started. How do you feel now? Oh, it's so much better now we started to jump. It's always like getting the first jump done and then you're just ready to go again and again and again. Feeling a lot more confident now? Definitely, yeah. Good, you look great in the air. So good, so good. I'm excited to see what comes next. Thank you so much. All right, take a look at our scoreboard here for the women. It is, um, Ospilk is taking in that first place, Sydney Kowalski in second, Lena in third, Annette in fourth, Helena in fifth, Ellen sixth, and Isaline in seventh. So our top four going on to the next round will be Ospilk, Sydney, Lena, and Annette. They are going into our semifinals, which will be a battle round. And, uh, that was that was pretty incredible. They really set the bar high. It just it just shows how far this sport has come. How you know the females yeah. are pushing it just as hard as the men. They're out there, and it's a uh, yeah. It's just it's it's a it's a level up from where last year was. You know, and I think every successive year it's just gotten better and better. Um, you see, just like smooth style entering like the female. Uh, like way of dudsing, and I love that because that's that's down at the heart and the root of duds. Yep. Uh, it's just that smooth, collected, like creative, innovative way of doing things in the air. Like own it, make it your own, and like execute it how you see fit. And uh, I think we saw that today from the first round with the females. Yeah. Yep. We are now going to go into our men's battle. So we have eight athletes that through the course of two rounds, um, qualified in the top eight out of 24. So we're now gonna go from freestyle to classic in a battle format. Tell us again a little bit about freestyle versus classic. Yeah, so uh, in the classic round, uh, we are just going to see the Dutzers doing straight airs. So there's no spins, there's no flips. It's just one straight Duds, and it's all about Honestly, it's about like showmanship. It's about, you know, making it your own, about proper entry, power out from the platform. Like, you should be close to hitting the other side of the platform if you want proper scores, I right. think. Here's a look at our Ben's quarterfinal. So we're going through a battle format. So we have a head-to-head -head where you see Trill, Trills and Herman, for example, are going to go head to head at the top of the tower, and the judges are going to score who they thought had the best duds out of those two. One will be wearing a white armband, one will be wearing a black armband, and the judges will then hold up paddles with either a black or a white score, and that's who they then thought had the better duds. First, we're going to have Ula against John, USA versus Norway, classic battle. This is something to look forward to. This is going to be great. Woo! Ula is going to kick us off. The black armband first. Right. Let's see what he's got. 
Oof. Header. No handers. I feel like today we are going to see a lot of no handers in the classic round. That adds a little bit of style, a little bit of points. Look how far from that tower he is going. He <laughs> lying. That was just a textbook no hander. Johnny's really going to come to play. Got to come to play if he wants to beat that. I know Johnny's got the no handers though, so we'll see. We'll see, but man, that was sick. Wow, wow, wow. You love to see it, just the F, like, no effort. He's running as fast as he can, he hops, and then it's just motionless throughout the air. That's just so pretty. So we're not going to see a score right away. We're going to have Johnny go now, yeah. and then the judges are going to tell us which one of the two they thought better. All right. The winner will go to the next round. Let's see. Johnny representing Texas, representing U.S., yeah. bringing his flair and style here to Austin. Let's see. <laughs> Adding a little bit more flavor. I'm curious which the judges will like. Um, you know, that was... <laughs> uh, so stylish, just fun, you know? A lot of fun. Like, that's exciting to watch, you know? And I think... Uh, it's, that's a hard decision. I'm I am glad I'm not a judge right now. I'm really glad I'm not a judge right now. I feel now. like the first one may have been more power further out of the tower, but yeah. Johnny scored points on the style side. Yeah. This is going to be I uh, I don't know. It's tough, you know? Like, man, I, I really don't know. I really don't know. It's like we said that you're now going to see judges holding up paddles of which they liked better. Here's yeah. a side-by-side -side look. <laughs> That's tough. I think the judges are having a tough time too. Tough time. <laughs> They're over there. Here are, wow, across the board. All right. Five Johnny. out of five for Johnny Nyberg. Johnny was right. going on to the semifinals. Oh man. It's Trulls versus Herman. Oh this my God. This is a hilarious <laughs> side by side. I, I can't <laughs> believe this right now. This is awesome. This this is a powerful quarterfinal right here. It, Trolls is going to, you know he's always going to bring it. You know he's going to bring the power. He's going to bring the showmanship. But Herman is not to be trifled with. He is going to match that in every way possible. Here we go. Let's see what they got. <laughs> like we said, the showman is out. Just renowned for his style. I mean... It's always so smooth, so collected in the air. I mean, yeah. I think the classic round is why I like Dead Sync so much. It just, you're, you're all doing the same trick, but it's all so different just based upon who's doing it. And you can add your own flavor, your own tech to it. And I, I love that. I just love that about Dead Sync. All right, Herman. I wonder if you answer. Whoa. Oh, okay. Okay. He's got props. Okay. Let's see. His signature orange color. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. <laughs> wow. The power that he has with basically half the size of trolls is crazy. Man. So sick. Let's see another angle. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> I'm curious what the judges are going to do. Uh, man, that was so rad. Wow. Wow. No hands straight in. Oh, dude, I know. Trolls has got to be sitting on some needles right now. Yeah, geez. That's I don't know which one I would pick either. Enough. They were both so sick. Here's our side-by-side -side look. Trolls on the left in black. Herman in the right in white. Let's take a look at our judges. Panel's coming up. So hard to decide. Oh, and Troll squeezes it out. Three to two. Wow. 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 That's tough. That's so tough. Oh. 
you got to be happy for Trills, but you're also heartbroken for Herman. It is, this is a brutal format, but it, well, welcome to the World Championship. Yeah. All right. We have Martin up first against Jergen. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Did he slip on exit? Well, we didn't seem too happy with it. Nah. Uh, I mean, that's... Yeah, he slips, yeah. Unfortunately. He was Man. able to save he it. He saved it. I mean, that's impressive in and of itself, but unfortunately, that's not... That's not what the judges want to see. Like we were saying, you know, the, the, the platform is slippery up there. It's, uh... Here we go, right away. <laughs> he just cheesed at the judges. That little smile right before he closes, so sick. So sick. I love how this squeezes out every element of style. You, ha you just have to come with, like, yeah. you have to come with as much as you can. Because exactly like you're saying, everyone's doing the same jump. How do you make it creative? How yeah. do you make it your own? How do you own it, the air, like yeah. I like to say? Yeah. And you see it right how here. How do you stand out? And that's how you stand out right there. There's so many different ways to close. There's so many different body positions to hit mid-flight. And uh, it's cool to see everybody kind of, you know, showcase their own originality. <laughs> Look at the smile. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. So cool. And five out of five. Makes sense. Understandable. Understandable. Jurgen is advancing to the top four. He's getting a shot for uh, podium. All right. Whew. Next up, we have Regan versus Kim. This is a tough. Oh my! Wow. This is. Uh... <laughs> this is a tough matchup for these two to meet in the quarterfinals. It's just it just illustrates how many amazing athletes we have in this game now. There's eight superstars that are all really really tough to meet, mm -hmm. and. You know, it is not going to be easy for either one of these guys to outshine the other. Yeah. We've got Reagan in the white, Kim in black. Kim going first. Let's see what he's got. <laughs> I think uh, we call that a nip slip, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That is a great freeze frame right there. I and the judges down. I have a feeling we'll see that picture on Instagram later. Yeah, yeah I think we will too. <laughs> Just a clever use of the t-shirt. He's an artist, so it's it's cool to see his own expression in the air. I love, love watching it. All right, next we got Reagan. Like he said, he is a freestyle cliff jumper, but he has gotten so good at dancing in the last two years, and he knows how to put on a show. He knows how to quote unquote pop off. So uh, <laughs> I'm excited to see what his classic looks like. This is the guy with the most points out of round one and two. He is the current leader. Mm -hmm. Let's see if he can stand up to his first two rounds. Oh my gosh. He was flying. He has so much power in his jumps. I mean, that. Uh, I was like he was on springs. Yeah, he, his legs are springs. It's crazy. <laughs> I've seen him jump over stuff like cliff diving that you just. Man. It looks like he went off a trampoline. Wow. <laughs> so sick, Greg. I'm curious what the judges are gonna think. You know, he he had obviously the the, the more power. Yeah. Um, perhaps even the bigger splash. However, I think Kim's was maybe a little bit more swaggerish yeah. in the air. So.
I'm curious what the judges think. I, I'm so happy I'm not a judge right now. <laughs> it's like every round has just been so hard. <laughs> Reagan and White, Kim Black. Here come our scores. Oh! Reagan, Reagan takes it out. it out. Yep. Just with the power, with the splash, I think is what is what kind of did it. Wow, he is stoked. He's got to be stoked. He's got to be stoked. Knocking out the defending champion. The defending second place. Sorry, sorry. the defending second place. Two-time yeah. two world champion. Two-time world champion. All right, our semifinals are set. We've got Johnny Nyberg against Tuls Toch and Jürgen Bogli against Reagan Popoff. We legit have Texas versus Norway right this now. This is This is crazy. Sick. <laughs> this is very, very cool. Yeah. I think uh, it's really rad to see see two Americans in the in the like you know place for the podium potential. That is that is uh, it's so cool to see how far that sport has come internationally. Mm -hmm. But right. before we continue that, we are going to go to the women's finals. So women's semifinals. Yeah. So it's the same format, same battle format. We're going to have Lena against Sydney and Aneta against Asbjörg. This too is going to be classic. So we're going to see the same format we saw for the men's in the previous round. There's no spin, not really spins. It's all about owning the air, own it with your style, put your own personal yeah. flair on it. But it is still the head-to-head -head white versus black armband. Yep. Same, same exact idea of what we just watched. Exactly. Those girls are up there kind of checking out the platform, making sure they don't slip. Uh, super smart. Lena and Sydney. I love the camaraderie. Everybody's just happy to be here, you know? Yeah. Yep. Nobody's mad. Nobody's upset. It's just stoke. Team Seneva going first. <laughs> Ooh, a little running man. Man. <laughs> the power on that was just so gangster. That was so cool. And she like eyes up the judges, you know, in the air, and then after she gets out of the water too. It's like proper. She's like, "Are you watching? Are you looking at me? You That's see so this?" Cool. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I love that. Like the slight smile, like yeah. the grin on her face. That's hard to do when you're in free fall. I gotta say, it's hard to do. Listen, I, I'm so happy I have you here because where if I'm standing up there and I'm jumping, I can't I can't even focus on anything else but the fact that I'm falling from 30 feet. Yeah. These people are blowing <laughs> kisses. Are and blowing kisses. It's, yeah. like, it's just it's just impossible to fathom how yeah. a hard, but also you have to you have to have such like courage and bravery yeah. to go out there and yeah. Oh my. It's, it takes a lot of willpower to, to do what they're doing right now, to stare face first at the water, knowing you're going to hit it. Like, and uh, to be able to take your eyes away from it, look at the judges, say, hey, look at me, and then hit the water. Man. And it's both. not easy to do. So sick. So sick. All right. Our judges seem like they're having this is a tough decision. That is tough. But here we go, Team Seneva in black armband. And USA represented in white. Ooh, and maybe giving a sneak. Oh, he doesn't oh, know. He doesn't know. Here come the scores. And Team <laughs> Seneva, Lena takes home the semifinal. Yeah. She will be advancing to the women's final. It makes sense. I mean, that. That put, she looked at the judges pretty much the whole time. Yeah. Man, it seems like we're going to have a Team Sonova podium. Podium. We've got Aneta versus Asbjörg. This, these are two of the superstars in the sport. It, you, I don't care if it's female, male, it doesn't matter. These two are just owners of the air. Late close. I like it.
Let's see if we can get another angle of that. <laughs> Flexing in the air. Flexing on the judges. Comes down, proper close. Looks good. All right, Aspia. All right, we got our classic queen right here. The reigning champion. Trying to repeat. <laughs> Late, close, looking at the judges the whole time. A look of shock across her teammates' faces. The stare down. <laughs> The entry wasn't as wasn't as dialed. I think she was too preoccupied looking at the judges. But I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Osbjörg with the white armband, Annette with the black. Our judges are going to show their paddles for who they think won that battle, that head-to-head. -head. This is our semi-final. The winner of these two will meet in the women's final. The judges look stressed. I would be stressed, too. Yeah. <laughs> our scores are going to roll in. Everyone is sitting on the edge of their seats. It's it's difficult to make these decisions, especially when you know all of the jumpers personally and you know what they're capable of. <laughs> and it looks like Asbjörg is advancing to her second final in a row. Asbjörg is on to the final. That will round out our women's semi-final. We are now going to go back to the male side of things, have our semifinal battle there. But this is what our women's look like now. We've got Lena and Ospielk in the final, Sydney and Aneta in the bronze. And it is, you know, it's just the crazy, crazy level this year that if you are in the final, even if you've made it to the bronze, you are competing at a world class level. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We have Johnny Goes Hard versus Truls. They're both just legendary members of this this sport. And uh, man, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to watch this. This is gonna be this is gonna be I mean yeah, I love this format and I hate this format. Yeah. Because it's like you've got you've got two powerhouses that you, you don't want to, both of them you know both are gonna deliver. Yeah. Both are gonna come out with a great jump. Uh-huh. And it's hard to compare. Hard, hard to compare hard to both compare. of them, you know. So I'm happy I'm not sitting in that judge's seat. Yeah. But at the same time, this is the competition. Yeah. We are deciding who the world champion is gonna be. Johnny coming out, hyping everyone up, his classic scream. Johnny Nyberg with the black. And trolls in white. Men's semifinal, here we go. <laughs> smooth. That was just smooth. Front flip to Duds. No hander entry. Straight to the dome. Texas style. And as you saw, we are back. His hands don't leave behind his back, you know? Just like check that out. Just watch. That is wild. <laughs> As you can see, we are back to freestyle yep. in this semifinal. Yep. The top. Yeah. So the the next this round is freestyle. So we're doing flips. We're doing uh, spins. All that stuff. Thrills. Getting the crowd stoked up. He wants this. Thrills wants. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Resetting. Yeah. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> what? What? Thrills. Dude. Oh, I'm so stoked he did that. That was awesome. What did we just see? So he does a matrix flip, and then he tweaks. Oh, he did that perfect! Oh, that is so sick. Yeah, so he does he does basically a front flip 180, uh, a 180, yeah, front flip 180 into a perfect back flip over. Uh, 
He can also consider it a 180 to a double backflip. But watch how he tweaks the second flip. Just perfect close, dude. Oh my god. Bruh. That that is gonna be tough to beat, is it not? Yes. Yeah. It is. Yes. Trolls is taking that. I mean, go to five. I mean that's yeah. Ball Johnny's was so sick. You know, it's just perfect. It's it's hard to beat that. It's hard to compete with something of that caliber. Just, I'm stoked for tools. That is the level we need. You need to perform at to get to the finals. And it is if you're gonna beat Johnny Nyberg, you gotta whip out something ridiculous. And Trills did it. Let's see what these two have. Man. that again so he does he does kind of like a j-step entry hits a an array into an arabian does a front half out it's basically 180 double front flip with a half spin at the end great to dance so cool and his closes are just spectacular i mean Man, his entry tech, so dialed. He looks so good the whole time he's in the air. Let's see if Reagan can throw down in accordance with that. He is gonna have to bring it. But so far, he has. Oh my god. What? Yes, dude. What? They both came to play. Yeah. Reagan throwing down. What? Front flip, 360, front flip to duds. I don't know too many people that can pull out that type of like extension on all of that, you know? It's just, he has so much power. It's like he's playing with an extra like half second of airtime. You know? That is ridiculous. Uh, he has got to be stoked with that. Yeah, yeah. He's cheesing, man. He's excited. That is, that's hard to say though. Hard to say. We're gonna get a look at our judges. Reagan is in the white armband. Jurgen in black. Our judges are deliberating. There. <laughs> <laughs> Jurgen is pointing to Reagan. Everybody sitting on the edge of their seat, patiently waiting to see who's be going to go to the finals. And Yelgen sneaks it out with a three to two decision. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Reagan, Reagan, Reagan not Yelgen, Reagan. Reagan is off to the final. It's Texas versus Norway in the final. Oh, this is too good. Good on Reagan, man. I know he's stoked. He was, he was a little nervous. He was just really happy to come here and compete and Man, he's pulling it off. He's in the finals. That's so rad. And there you have it. Thrills back in the finals as well after a little hiatus. And this is going to be such an epic round. Oh. Your vegan Dead's World Championship in 2023. We will have Trunstorp and Reagan Popoff in the finals competing for that world title. Yeah. On the women's side of thing, just as exciting. Lena and Asbjörg are going to be going head to head in that final and Sydney yeah. and Aneta competing for that third place. Just like last year, Lena versus Asbjörg. I really feel like these playoffs or wherever you want, you know, th these last two rounds has been up their game. Yeah. From the first two rounds, this has gotten, uh, now we're really starting to see world, world class dancing. World class dancing. Here we go. She knows the mentality of dancing so inherently. It's pretty cool to see. You know, 
she started very recently and is just like, yeah, this is what you do. This is how it's done. You know, obviously does it naturally. Representing Minnesota, representing the U.S. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Flip, front half, back out, doesn't quite close. She got it to a duds formation, but didn't quite have the time to bring her legs down fully. She slapped them a little hard, I'm sure, but trying a triple from 10 meters to duds is just, that's ridiculous. <gasps> Both of them are going for it. You have to give them credit yeah, for yeah. The it. Yeah. Let's see what's lays it out. Lays it out. Just not quite the entry I think the judges are looking for. That's gonna be a tough decision for third place. Yeah. Our side by side look. Yep. Let's see it. That's tough. That's that's a tough comparison. That is a tough they both. decision to make. But clearly not for our judges. Yeah. Five out of five. Yeah. Going to Team Seneva. Finals time. And we are seeing a head-to-head -head Sonova battle here. Oh, whoa. The Steve's on that. That was so good. Just like posing in the air, just getting so flat. Spotting, toe grab into a nice, clean entry. Lina is bringing yeah. the intensity to the final, that is for sure. It's really just a 180, which is crazy because it just looks so much more technical than that because it really is to like hit that pose, just grab your feet like that, and then like enter appropriately. It is really technical. And man, she stomped that. I wonder what Asperger's thinking. All right, this is the last jump of the women's 2023 World Championship. Aspiel going for that title. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. She's the defending world champ for a reason. That the shrimp roll right there. Rotates just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that's tough. That's definitely the more difficult trick. She looked good in the air up until the close. The close wasn't wasn't so great. All right, we're gonna give her an interview. Let's see what are going through their heads. All right, ladies, how are we feeling about our jumps? Uh, I felt like I held the pike position longer than I usually do, so I'm very happy with it. Very happy. So even either if you win or if you're second, you'll be happy either way? I mean, of course, I hope that I'm winning. <laughs> right, right. And Aspirk, how do you feel about your jump? I could say the same. I felt like I held the pike position pretty long. <laughs> so both of you feel pretty confident in winning today? No, definitely not. I don't know. <laughs> it's up to the judges, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I guess we'll have to wait for the judges to decide, but. Here's our side-by-side -side look. <sighs> that is tough. That is tough. I think if we're going on entry, Lena took it, but we'll see. And our decision is, 
Wow. Five <laughs> and five. <laughs> Two yes. Osbjerg, oh. our defending That's world champion, takes it home again. World champ. Congratulations! Thank you, thank you. Oh. Fourth time next year? Uh, hopefully, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> How are you feeling? Are you gonna celebrate big tonight? Oh yeah, it's gonna be a big celebration. <laughs> and next year, will you come for the revenge? Yeah, I will win it next year. Just <laughs> ah. <laughs> Great job, ladies. I'm so proud of both of you. Thank you. There you have it. Our vegan Dutch World Championship in 2023 is complete. On the women's side, Asbjörg is our champion. Lina is taking in second place, and Aneta bringing home third. We have a full Seneva podium, and it is pretty. Uh, that is pretty impressive. That was really fun to watch, man. So stoked for all the women that were involved today. They really like up the level of what's possible out there. And I hope they're inspiring so many more females to enter the sport. Uh, up next, we have the final and the bronze final for the men's. We have Truls versus Regan. And then we have John versus Jürgen. We got Texas versus Norway. Uh, it's cool to see some Americans in these finals, and I think it just kind of showcases the level that Duds have gotten to outside of the country, outside of Norway. Um, <laughs> the energy with this too, I love. I love it. Johnny with the black armband, Jürgen in white. He is owning this moment. He's taking in every aspect of it. Owning that tower. And giving his signature scream. Oh, we will rock you in the background. Got <laughs> Come on, John. Let's see what you do. Wow! I think he has one of the most steezy 1080s in the game. Just how he hits that like first three and then wraps with his arms behind his back is just crazy. Look at this. Just, oh my God, that looks so sick. That looks so sick. That, he seems like he just has total control it's, while he's in the air. It's total control and I mean, you know, like we've been talking about, that comes from just dedication and like determination to just get good at the sport. Just continuing to keep pushing it, keep trying the same tricks, really dialing them in. Yogan's got a chance to answer. Oh my gosh. He answered, he definitely answered. That side full back out to Dutz. Let's let's see another angle. Jurgen has so much, so many technical tricks and like just consistently looking good. Yeah, I think it's side full. Yeah, back out to Dutz. The entry was proper. Man, I love how he hits that little laid out position right before he closes. That's like a really nice aspect to add to a Dutz. Just to show that you're in control before you close. Gives a little bit more power when you close, a little bit bigger splash. Um, it actually helps for the impact to not hurt as much. If you can open and close really quick. So. Our judges are gonna come and give us a score. Johnny with the black, Yelgin in white. Everyone is patiently waiting for this third place bronze medal. Although Johnny's got a smile on his face the entire time. They both really want the podium. You can see it in their anticipation. And we've got four to one going to Johnny Nyberg. Yeah. Oh man, he's happy, dude. I'm stoked for him. We've got a third place. We've got a, We've got two U.S. At least we're gonna have two U.S. people on the podium. On the podium. That is pretty cool. All right. But this is the match we've all been waiting for. Yeah.
This is it. Good stop, Reagan Popoff. U.S. Norway. You couldn't script this better. Two of the most powerful athletes <laughs> in the game. <laughs> Steezy. Man, just a, like like style god, you know. So fun to watch. Owning that tower brings the light down just for extra boost. Let's see. Sick airtime. I'm curious what the judges are going to think. It looks a little feet heavy, but we'll see. We'll see a different angle from this current video perspective. I couldn't quite tell, but let's see. Oh, the, oh, the power. The power on that. Dude, how he gets his oh, that's to get so high. No, I think I think that was good. That, that was good. He has got to be happy with that. Yeah. Right on, Trolls. Putting it down. All right. Let's see what Reagan throws out for this last round. The last jump of our 2023 Dutch World Championship. Reagan Popoff representing the U.S. Owning this moment, owning that tower, locked in. Here we go. Trulz is pretty excited because I think he knows, but we'll see. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so close. So close, Reagan. Oh my goodness. So he's doing, what he's doing is a front flip to a front flip 540. So that's a front flip with one and a half spins. And then right at the end, another half to dots. We're going to go down and have a little chat with both of these guys see how they're feeling after the final. All right, guys, how are we feeling? Jules? Quite good. Quite good? Yeah, it looks like you're pretty confident, huh? Yeah, quite, yeah, quite good. Yeah. And Reagan, how do we feel over here? This has been a blast. It's been an honor. <laughs> it's just been an honor to be able to compete versus Jules, the man himself. First time in the world championships and at least second place either way. So best of luck to you. We'll see what the judges have to say. Will we have a U.S. champion, or will it continue to be a Norwegian champion? Tuns Tull is your vegan dance world championship. Coming back after, what, six, six years? And taking the title back. Right on, three-time world champion now. Congratulations, Trolls. So stoked for you. That is incredible. That is amazing. <laughs> Man, he's so excited. As per uh, tradition, the winner has to do a sofa. So Trills is on his way up to the tower. He is going to... If you don't know what a sofa is, you're about to find out. <laughs> oh, yeah, the joy is just radiating out of him right now. And look how excited his competitors are for him. He's having the time of his life. Oh. <laughs> Proper Salvo 
celebratory sofa. Wow. So that's how you end the World Championships right there. That was incredible. Here are your final results. Tulstop taking home the 2023 World Championship. Reagan coming in second place and Johnny rounding it off with the bronze spot. That is your podium for 2023. All three of them will be receiving a Maurice LaCroix watch. And we're gonna go down to the podium here real soon to talk to all of them. You're gonna get to see firsthand the prize giving ceremony. And on the women's side of things, we will have the same. We have its team, Sonova, full podium with Aspio taking home the gold, Lina in second, and Aneta taking home that third place bronze trophy. This has been incredible. I mean, look at the, the camaraderie that's radiating out of these guys. They're all so stoked for Tours right now. They're happy for each other. Everyone is just... Everyone is really enjoying it. We're gonna go down to the poolside and talk to our winners. All right, Jules, that sofa was absolutely crazy. How are you feeling right now? You know, we, in Norway we call it burst. Burst? That's like okay. being angry and the sofa. I like it. The winning sofa, finally. How does it feel to be on the podium with two Americans? Do you like it? Yeah, bro, it's the right, right direction. The sport is growing, I mean. I'm blessed. Happy as can be since you won first, huh? Yeah. It's been a while. 2017. Yeah. Last term. So, yeah, I still got it. Five years later. Well, six years later, and you got it. You got it in the bag. <laughs> yeah, you tell me. <laughs> wow. Great job. Great job. There you have, I mean, listen, this was an incredible competition. I think the level of skill that was displayed today is probably the highest we've ever seen. The judges were tough, and we still saw high scores, high skill. They rose to the occasion, and Truss, you know, he was just a little bit better than the rest, and because of that, he is now our world champion. Yeah. But that does not take away from the fact that everybody just showed out today at a level I don't think we've seen yet. Yeah, I think uh, the bar has been raised for what is possible in this sport on 10 meters, and uh, what just tricks you can do, and uh, the type of innovation that is possible in this sport. Uh, man, I really enjoyed watching that. That was so incredible. Um, just uh, like like Trulis was saying in his interview, you know, it's it's kind of showcases the direction the sport is heading. Having international people on the podium uh, is so cool to see. Um, you know, we have three Americans on the podium. We have Sydney in third for the women. We have Johnny and Reagan third and second, respectively. Uh, it's a uh, it's cool to see, um, but obviously Norway is retaining the title. Yeah, it is uh, U.S. The U.S. came <laughs> a lot closer than they did last year. Absolutely, <laughs> Vikings yeah. are staying on top. Yeah, it's still in their blood. It it's not in ours yet. It, you know, <laughs> not yet is the clear is the is the right terminology there. Yeah. Because, you know, the growth we've seen from the U.S. side and the intensity the athletes are bringing. It's been listen if. If Norway wants to stay on top of this podium, they're gonna have to keep elevating their game because the US is bringing it every single year. Yep. More and more athletes are coming and the athletes are getting better and better. So this is, uh, you, listen, next year, who knows? But right now, Norway stays on top. It's just the start. It really is just the start. Um, it's yeah. important that we mention as well as we're waiting for some of our sponsors that helped us make this possible vegan chocolate as our title sponsor. Vegan's also giving away a prize to the best athlete photo for the competition, which will be revealed on the Dutch Federation Instagram in a few days. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Our main sponsor, one of our main sponsors is Suneva Finden, which sponsors the whole girls team, which you're seeing in front of you. We've got our other main sponsor, Moped Beel. These are, you can, be, you can drive these at a young age, 16 years old. And then our world championship sponsor, Maurice LaCroix. 
the uh, the winners, the top three on the men's side, and the winner of the, the female side will all be getting a watch from Maurice Lacroix. Mun Munkom Radler can also be joined at a young age, enjoyed at a young age, good vibes in a can. Shades of Norway, and then the official merch from Dead's Federation. Thank you to our sponsors who helped us make this possible. This is a, uh, again, this is a scale of competition that Dead's can't do alone. The Dead's Federation can't do alone, we're, we're, and it is, you know, amazing to have such great people supporting us and along for the ride, because we're taking this up every single year, and to have incredible support like that makes all of these things possible. We will shortly be going down to the poolside for right. our coronations of our winners. You go, USA, USA. The USA chants coming out loud. The US flag is being represented. In second place, Norway staying on top. Lina Lund, well earned, absolutely. In first place, Aspir. Congratulations, staying on top for the third year in a row. The third year in a row. Check, getting right on. prizes. Now this was this was a display of skill and talent. Uh, from the women's side, that was really, really yeah. fun to see, inspiring to see. Having having more competitors too, you know, increases the level. Uh, and man, that was that was really fun to watch. I like I like seeing that. I like seeing just like the the level be raised, the bar be raised, without a doubt. And again, Ospiel won the Utah national U.S. national championship and yep. proved that women are competing at this in this sport the same level as men and she is oh. celebrating to prove it that's it <laughs> Super impressive for Sydney Kowalski as well for taking home the third. Just having started so recently and being able to incorporate diving into Dutzing, uh, you know, congratulations to her as well. Oh, they get chocolate too? <laughs> Lucky. Johnny Nyberg getting announced for that bronze medal third place. Man, flew the whole way out here from Texas. Came here, threw down. He's stoked, he's so stoked. Big time dream for him, I know. And uh, man, congratulations to Reagan as well. He's taking home second place. Congratulations. Look at the smile. He's so excited. <laughs> Texas represented on that podium. But 
our vegan Dutch world champion for 2023 is Truls Tolk. Norway is staying on top of that podium. Truls is back after six years. He is super stoked to be there. He worked his butt off to get there. And he is going to retain that title until someone can unseat him for 2024. Moneymaker! Let's get it! I love seeing Thrills on the podium. You know, he's uh, he just has so much seas and so much air awareness and fluidity while he's in the air. It's great to see that somebody, that style is prevailing still in the sport for the podium. Um, so important. This was well earned from all three. All three. Competing in the rain, working through, uh, you know, varying weather conditions and still throwing down, still like, yeah, just doing the most. Doing the most. Yeah. Battling the elements, battling jet lag. Yeah. As you have to do when you come all the way from the US. Absolutely. I'm bringing you back to Folk Nevada here at Oslo, Norway. This has been an incredible day. The fans are happy, we're happy, the athletes are happy. This has been your World Championship for 2023, sponsored by Vegan. Let's take one last look at our winning jumps from both Asbjörg and Truls. pleasure my name is American Carl I have been it's been an honor to be joined by John Fay it's been a pleasure this has been a blast Trust Hope and Asbjörg are our vegan dust world champions for 2023 congratulations to both of you well earned absolutely deserved um, thanks so much for tuning in this was something for the record books. This is a fantastic way to cap off the season. We will see you next year. Make sure you stay tuned. Follow us on social media. Follow Dutch, the athletes, everybody, because next year is going to be even bigger than this year. Be sure to jump on this rocket ship because this is going to continue to take off. We are going to sign off here from Folk Nevada here in Oslo, Norway. Thanks for joining us.